Hello, David. How are you? You are all welcome in Jesus' name. The devil is a bastard. <laughs> I was about to start like five minutes to seven, and he just attacked my internet. Hallelujah. And it's ten minutes. I'm ten minutes late. But we are here. Glory to God. He can't stop it. He can't stop us. Good afternoon, Sister Laura. God bless you. Oh, God bless you, Ferdinand, from all the way from Dubai. God bless you. God bless you. It's going to be an awesome time in his presence today. I can already feel him. Hallelujah. Our God is good. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You are all welcome in Jesus' name. You are welcome. You are welcome. Please share. Invite others. Let us study together. Let's study together. Hallelujah. Let's study together. Hallelujah. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. The book of John series. Watching right on duty, but God is great. <laughs> Hallelujah. God bless you. He's going to reward your faithfulness, you know. There is no time. Any time you spend for God is never a waste. It's never a waste. Hallelujah. I've just come back from work about two hours ago. No, one and a half hour ago. Quickly had my dinner because I don't like eating late, late in the night. So, here we are. Glory to God. Glory to God. God bless you guys. God bless you. You are welcome in Jesus' name. I hope good day, Sister Anne. You are welcome in the name of Jesus. God bless you. God bless you all. God bless you all. Hallelujah. I'm just waiting for more people to join us. Can we share, please? Just share on your wall. Share on your page. Share on your groups. Invite people to come and learn and hear about God. You know, most of those things we hear, we don't hear it in the churches. Most of those things, it's just by His grace, you know. To worship you, Lord, we live. We live to worship you. Hallelujah, Jesus. That is all we are created for, to worship Him. Lord, I live to worship You. Lord, I live to worship You. Glory be to Your name, Jesus. To worship You, I live, I live to worship You. Nothing else matters. Come on, worship Him. Hallelujah. Let's just worship him. It's always good to always worship God when you come before his presence, you know. That will further bring down his power, his hand, and his might. Hallelujah, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. Oh, yeah. Come on, worship him. We're going to worship him real quick. We're not going to take too much time in worship him. But we're just going to worship him anyways. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, Father. We worship you. Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, the Lord our provider. He is our maker. Oh, Father, we worship you. We worship you. Master, that I will show the head of this. Oh, we give you praise, oh God. We give you praise. We just give it to you. You deserve it all, O oh God. You deserve all the praise. You deserve all the glory. Father, we worship you. Oh, worship you. We worship you. To worship you, Lord, we live. We live to worship you. Our life is all about you, Father. Father, we Hallelujah. Omniscient God, yes. He is. Father, we adore you. We adore you. We exalt you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Just worship him. Briefly give him praise before we start tonight. We are going to start any minute now. 
Just waiting for a few more people to come online. And then we are starting. Hallelujah. This is Bible study. Oh, Father, we adore you. Nothing else matters. Nothing else matters, Lord. When, when you are involved, nothing else matters. Oh, to worship you, Lord, we live. We live to worship you. Lord, I live to worship you. To worship you, I live to worship you. I live to worship you. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, yes, Father. Lord, I live to worship you. I live to worship you. I live to worship you. Father, we live to worship you. We live to worship you, Father. Oh, hallelujah, Lord. We live. We live to worship you, Jesus. We live to worship you, Jesus. We live to worship you, Jesus. Let your name be praised forever. Let your name be glorified, O God, our Father. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Maskanda da Bushanda Masanda Kayata Londi de Bushindi Rata Lete Kayata Maskanda da Bushindi Oh Jesus, Jesus, Jesus Father, have your way tonight. Have your way tonight. Have your way tonight. Have your way tonight, Jesus. Have your way tonight. Rata Lete Kayata. Father, we love you. We love you. Just tell him how much you love him. Just say, Lord, I love you. I love you, Lord. I just love you. I love you. That's for what I'm going through, irrespective of what is going on in my life. I just love you. Oh, Jesus, I love you. Love, we love you. We love you. We love you. Oh, we love you, Father. We live to worship you. We live to worship you. To worship you. To worship you. Lord, we live to worship you. We live to worship you. Lord, we live to worship you. We live to worship you, Jesus. Maskanda da da bo shirihi. Retete lite kayata basanda da da bo shandaha. We live to worship you, Jesus. We live to worship you, Father. Hallelujah. Lord, we live to worship you. We live to worship you. Let your name be praised forever. Let your name be praised forever. Nothing else matters but you, God. It's all about you. It's all, it's all about your kingdom, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you praise this hour. We glorify you this hour. We bless you this hour. Let your name be praised, oh God. Let your name be glorified, Jesus. Oh, let your name be magnified, Jesus. Father, we worship you. We worship you. Lord, we just love you. We just love you. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, our Father. Oh, glory to your name, O oh God. Glory be to you. Glory be to your name, Jesus. Rata lete kayata masanda. He the boss can the he. Holy Ghost, you are welcome right now. Have your way. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place, oh God. Take your place, Father. Oh, have your way. Teach us your word. Give us understanding. Give us utterances, oh God. Let your name be praised, Father. I will be here tonight. Lord, we pray it will not be in vain. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Just lift your voice and worship in one minute for two minutes. And then we are starting. Rata leteke yete. Maskanda da bo shandaha. Lord, we give you our hearts, oh God. We give you our soul. Lord, we live for you alone. Lord, it's all about you. Be thou exalted, Jesus. Be thou glorified, Jesus. 
Be magnified, Jesus. Maskanda da da boishede he. Retete lite kayata basanda de de boishede he. Oh, hallelujah, 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 Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus, hallelujah, Jesus. Masanda da da boishede he. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, rata kalata. Rete de de boishede he, lete boishede he. Oh, God, we worship you. We worship you, our Father. We worship you, our Savior, our Maker. The one that loves like no other. Lord, we thank you because it be you are the way. By strength shall no man prevail. We give it up to you. Our hearts, oh God, we give it to you. Our lives, we give it to you, Father. Oh, Jesus, 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 our Father. The shepherd of our soul. The owner of our life, Father, we just give it to you, my God. Holy Spirit, we invite you. 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 We invite you to take over. We invite you to take over. We invite you, Lord, to take over. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We love you, Jesus. We just love you, Father. We love you, Father. We love you, Father. We love you, Father. We love you. Just tell him, Lord, I love you. I just love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Let me put my chair a little bit. Say, I love you, Jesus. Father, we love you. We love you. We love you. We love you. Father God, we love you. We love you. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Yes, hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. May your name be praised forever. In the name of Jesus. Father, we just thank you for this hour. Let your name be praised. Let your name be glorified. Let your name be magnified. Have your way. Have your way. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. For those of us at home, I hope you have your Bible, your Bible with you. We can make it interactive. It is the book of John series. Hallelujah. We want to study the whole book of John. And when I ask the question, a whole lot of you were interested. And I can see many of you online. Even though you are not commenting, I can see you all. You are welcome in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Wow. We are almost, I know it doesn't say how many people are online actually, but we are here. Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Father. Can you all hear me? So it's the book of John. We are studying the book of John today. So get your Bible, your pen, your paper, whatever you want to study with. And let's, let's start. We're going to start from... I like reading from the easy-to-read version, so I'm going to open this. I have my King James Version here. And here, I want to, on my Bible app, I want to go to the easy-to-read. I like to study with easy-to-read. When I study with King James, I like to use the easy-to-read as well because it simplifies it. So it helps me. The, the, it helps me to understand more. It gives me better understanding. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's the book of John series. So we are starting from John chapter 1. The gospel according to John chapter 1. So if you have your Bible, open your Bible to John chapter 1. And we are going to start from there. Hallelujah. From verse 1. It says, let me open it on my Bible app as well. John. Hallelujah. Yes. Ready to go. Uh, you are welcome back, Sister Carla. God bless you. John 1. Yes. We are reading. No, just put John chapter 1. We'll be reading the whole chapter. And we're just going to be. It's a series. So wherever we stop, we stop. And then tomorrow we continue. So we are going to be doing this series every single day by God's grace. So tomorrow we announce the time we'll do it tomorrow, but today we are doing it now. So we are going to start from verse 1. It says, In the beginning was the Word. In the beginning was the Word. 
And the word was with God. And the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. Verse, three, verse 4. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. And the light shined in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. Now, that, this is talking about John. But in the first place, he says, In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. So if I may ask all of us, this is Bible study. It's question and answer. Right? Question and answer. Can you all see me? Hallelujah. Hey. <laughs> Ferdinand. Now who can tell me what is that place talking about? In the beginning. Let me use this easy to read to read. It say, before the word began, which is in the beginning, the word was there. Who is this word? Who is this word that the Bible is talking about? Before the word began, this is the easy to read version. You see why I like it? Before the word began, the word, before the word, the whole world began, the word was there. Uh, the word was with God and the word was God. He was there with God in the beginning. Everything was made through him and nothing was made without him. In him there was life and that life was a light for the people of the world. Hallelujah. The light shines in darkness and the darkness has not defeated it. Who is that? Lord Asmi says God. Hallelujah. More response now. Inter <laughs> Who is this place talking about? I want to hear from you. Interactive. Come on. Who is this place? In the beginning was the word. W-O-R-D. Word. So who is this place talking about? Laura said God. In the beginning was the word. Who is the word here? Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Response. Who is the Bible talking about? Power in the word. <laughs> okay. Who is this place talking about? Who is this place talking about? Say, before the word began, the word was there. The word was there. Who is this word? It's talking about. No more answers. Come on, Bible scholars. Where are you guys? Huh? In the beginning was the word. The word was now. If the word. The word was where? If the word was with God. So how can that word be God. This place is talking about Jesus. This is talking about Jesus. Before the word began, we are being told that Jesus was already here. He was already there. He was already there. He was with God in the beginning. If you see, when God was during the time of creation, but, uh, uh, God says, let us when God was talking, was God was created during the time of creation. He was not saying, I will create. Let me. Let me. He said, let us. Let us. He was using the term us, which is God was not there by himself. He was there with his son, Jesus. Although Jesus came years later to die for the sin of mankind. But right from the world, right from the beginning of time, from when the world began, Jesus has been in existence. He is the son of God. It says the word was with, with God. He was there with God in the beginning. Everything was made through him. Everything was made through Christ. Hallelujah. And nothing was made without him. Because he was there with his father. And then we are both working together. Doing the work of creation. Hallelujah. And in him there, there was life. In him is life. In Jesus we have life. And we have life in abundance. And that life was a light for people of the world. Jesus is our light. And that light shines in darkness even till now. And darkness cannot withstand it. Darkness cannot comprehend it. He is a powerful God. He is a powerful God. Are we catching it? Are we catching it? It's talking about Jesus. Jesus has been right from time. So Jesus did not just come to be when he came to die for mankind. And right from time, he's got power. He's got authority. Hallelujah. He is with his father God in heaven. 
They created the word. He said, in the beginning was the word. And that word is Jesus. So this God, we start to say, he is light. In him is life. There has always been life in Christ Jesus. And light. He is the light of the world. And darkness cannot withstand him. Darkness cannot stand him. And from verse 6, says, there was a man, a man sent from God whose name was John. We call him John the Beloved. The same came for a witness. To be a witness for the light. Now, John the Baptist was here for a purpose. He was born for a purpose. He is here for a purpose. He was here to pave the way for the light. He was here to pave the way for the world, which is Jesus Christ. He was here to prepare the way from, uh, for Jesus Christ. The same came for a witness. To be a witness of the light that all men through his or through his might, through him, might believe. So before Jesus came, John the Baptist was sent, was sent ahead of him to prepare the way, to announce the coming of Jesus to the, to the world, to tell people that Jesus himself was coming. He was not the light. John the Baptist was not the light. He was just a servant. He was he that was chosen to go ahead of Christ and prepare the way for him, but was sent to bear witness of that light. John the Baptist, Baptist was not the light, but he was sent ahead. He was sent ahead to bear witness of that light. That, that was the true light, which lighted every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. This is still talking about Jesus. Even when Jesus came, he was in the world. The world did not know him. The world did not recognize him. Even as a baby, people was, was at the, oh, the son of the carpenter. The son of the carpenter. They never knew him. Even as an adult, people still did not know him. He was in the world. The world that he himself created. And even these Pharisees, even these uh, people that were supposed to be the keepers of the laws of Moses, of the Old Testament, that thought that they know the Bible, they know how they saw, they know that they saw him, but they did not even recognize him. The world knew him not. He came unto his own. Still talking about Jesus. Jesus came unto his own and his own received him not. They did not receive him. But today, he said, as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Have you received him today? Have you received Jesus into your life as your Lord and personal Savior? He said, but as many that have received him, to them he gave power. So if you have received Jesus, he has given you power to become the sons and the daughters of God. Hallelujah. Look at that. Look at that. You are not ordinary anymore. Don't look at yourself as ordinary me. You carry power. You carry fire. The life of Christ is in you. The light of God. If you are a carrier of God, if you are a carrier of Jesus, a carrier of the Holy Spirit, you are a carrier of the Word. You are a carrier of light. The light of God is in you. That is why you are a threat to the kingdom of darkness. Except if you do not know the power that you possess. Except if you do not know the power that you carry. Except if you do not know the power that you carry. He has given you power. He said, but as many as received him, if you are a born again child of God, if you are a Christian and you have accepted Jesus into your life as your Lord and personal Savior, he has given you power to become his daughter, to become his son. To them that believe, he gave them power to become the sons, the daughters of God, even to them that believe on his name. You need to know that you, are, you become a supernatural being once you have Christ in you. Yeah, there's people still in the physical, but it's more of a spiritual matter than it is that, that than it is in the physical. Are you catching it? Are you catching it? So he has given you power. He has given you power. Which were born not of blood. Which were born not of blood. Which were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh. Mashandadabos. <laughs> not of the will of man, but of God. Look at that. Which we were born, we were born. Not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of, the, of man, but of God. 
the life of Christ. That thing, you know, from that day we confess Jesus as our Lord and personal Savior. Something happens in the spiritual. There is a spiritual birth that takes place. You are transformed instantly on the inside. Jesus comes inside of you and you become his dwelling place. You become his dwelling place. Not of blood, not of flesh, not of the will of man, but of God. This is the plan of God from the beginning. This is the will of God from the beginning. It is not of flesh, it's a spiritual thing. And the word was made flesh. Jesus came in the form of flesh and dwelt amongst us. And we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. <laughs> Yay! Look at that. Look at that. The word was made flesh. Jesus, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, he was made flesh. He came as a human and dwell amongst men and dwell amongst people and dwell amongst the, the, his creations on this planet earth. And we beheld his glory. We beheld his glory. And the, the glory as of the only begotten son of the father. Even though he was here as a man, he was still the only begotten of the father. He was full of grace and truth. And that is how he was, is, and is, and will continue to be our perfect example. Are you full of grace? That same grace he has left with us. He's given to us. For by grace are you saved. For by grace we have been saved. It is not of our own works. It is the plan of God. The original plan of God from the beginning. For by grace we have been saved. Not of what, lest any man should boast. And you say God is not partial. He did not plan to save A and leave B. He said as many, as many that receive him. As many. So we have the choice to choose. But look, I say full of grace and truth. This is, this is one of the qualifications or criteria. Of our Lord Jesus Christ, full of grace and truth. What about us that carries him? What about us that he's living inside of us? What about us? We are equally filled with that same grace. We are equally filled with that same truth. Because he has given. That is why he said to them, greater works, greater than he did, we will do as long as we believe. Hallelujah. Full of grace. <laughs> and mess, Full of grace. And truth. Verse 15. We are reading John chapter 1. Verse 15 says, John bear witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. Now, this is John also confirming what this place is saying. That the word has been in existence. The word, which is Jesus, has been living right from the beginning of time. Even though Physically, John came before him. John also recognized him. Look at what he's saying here. Look at it here. That John bear witness of him and cried saying, This was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me. He that cometh after me. Like he's talking about Jesus that, is, that came after him. John was born before Jesus was born in the physical he recognized that. He said, he's preferred before me. Now look at, for he was before me. Look at the misery. John was speaking misery. The people, they heard him, but they did not understand. He was still trying to introduce Jesus to the people. He was introducing him. He was still saying that this man, although I was born before him, he was talking now in the physical, but actually, he has been he has been in existence long before I was born. Glory, hallelujah! For he was before me. He was bearing witness. But these people they do not understand. They did not understand what John was talking about, and of his full and of his fullness. Verse sixteen, John chapter one, verse sixteen, and of his fullness we for. 
and of his fullness have all we received the grace for grace. <laughs> Look at what we have received. For of his goodness, let me read it with the easy to read uh, version. Verse 16. Hallelujah, Jesus. You are perfect in all your ways, O oh God. Let me read. He said, let me read from verse 15. John told people about him. This is the easy to read version. I just want to break it down for better, clearer understanding. Verse 15 of John chapter. He said, John told people about him. He said loudly, John was saying it loudly to the people. This is the one I was talking about. When I said the one who is coming after me is greater than I am. He is greater than I am because he was living before I was even born. Yes, the word, verse 16. Yes, the word. Talking about Jesus. The word here represents Jesus. Talking about Jesus. Jesus is the word. He says the word was full of grace and truth. He was full of grace and truth. And from him we all received one blessing after another. That is the law. That is. That is um, 16. That is the law. That is. The law was given to us through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. The only Son is the one who has shown us what God is like. He is himself God and is very close to the Father. Are you, are you understanding this? The world is full of grace and truth. And that same grace and truth has been made available to us, has been given to us, has been... Is there for us if only we believe it full of grace and truth for the law? They say, and his fullness 16 with King James says, and his fullness have have we all received and grace for grace, grace for grace. So tell me, tell me. If we have all received this grace, grace for grace, the grace that was in Jesus is still that same grace that is in us. Why are you afraid? Why are you shaking? Why are you terrified? Why are you still wavering as the child of God? Why is it that you do not understand the power that you carry as a child of God? Any little thing like this, you are shaking. Some of you, you are so afraid. You can't even switch off your light in the night to sleep. And you are born again. The Bible says that we are filled, full of his grace. Grace for all grace. Just as it was in Jesus. Just as it was, as it is in Jesus. It is still so in you. You need to believe it. You need to believe it. Many of us, our problems is doubt. We do not have confidence in ourselves. We do not even know the power that we are carrying. The Spirit of God lives in you. No man has seen God at any time. Okay, uh, 17 says, For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Look at that. Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. And it's come upon us as well. From the day, say for as many that received him, from the very day you receive him, you receive his grace, you receive the fullness of his grace and his truth. That is why today, if you are a child of God, even when you lie, you just, you know, you are so uncomfortable. You are not comfortable. You are no longer, you are no longer comfortable with lies. This truth is in you. You are truthful all the time. His grace of God is all, he's been given to you to live righteous, to live holy in his fullness. He lives in you. God lives in you. Jesus lives in you. The Holy Ghost lives in you. Hallelujah. Look at what John chapter 1 is saying. Verse 19. This is the book of John series. You know, we all show our interest. We want to learn. We want to study the book of John. Open my eyes so I doubt no more. No, don't doubt. Sister Ferdinand. Ferdinand. Ferdinand Benson, ben. Don't doubt. You don't need to doubt it. From the day you got saved, something happened to you. Something supernatural happened to you. From verse 19, it says, And this is the record of John. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are thou? 
<laughs> they were asking John the Baptist, who are you? The priest, the Levites, these are supposed to be the priest and the Levites from Jerusalem. These are the people that are supposed to know the Bible A to Z. They know everything about the laws of Moses. They know everything about the Bible. But now John was talking about Jesus. He was speaking miseries about Jesus. They lacked understanding. They did not understand. And they came to ask him, who are you? John, who are you? I don't know who is asking, who are you? <laughs> because of you are telling them about the love of God. And who are you? To, who are you? Look at John. He says, and he confessed. John, and he confessed and denied not. But confessed, I am not the Christ. John was about to say, I am not the Christ. Who are you? They did not know. They, they were confused. They couldn't tell. They were asking, is this the Messiah or is he not? What is he saying? We don't understand. We can't catch it. Who are you, John? And John confessed. He told them the truth. You, I am not the Messiah. I am not the Messiah. And then 21 says, and they asked him, what then? Are thou Elias? And he said, I am not. Look at the people that are supposed to be the keeper of the law. They are seeing the truth. And the coming of Christ was prophesied in the Old Testament. But this time, in the real time when the thing, the prophecy was materializing. When the prophecy was coming to pass, they could not understand. Their understanding, they lacked, they lacked understanding of what John was talking about. What then? So, okay, are you Elias? Are you Elijah? Are you this? And he said, I am not. Okay, are thou uh, that prophet? And he answered, no. 22 says, then they said unto him, who are thou? They are confused. John, who are you? Who are you? That we may give an answer to them that sent us. What sayest thou of themselves? John, what can you say about yourself? What are you saying about yourself? You, I am, what can you say about your own self? Oh, you might be going out on evangelism and they are asking you, who are you? What can you say about yourself? What will you? What do you have to say about yourself? What is it that you can say to people about your own self? John was proud. He was. He was proud of whom, whom, whom he was. He was not ashamed to say whom he was. He was not ashamed to say whom he was. Who are you, John? So that we can go and give reply to the people that have sent us to come and find out who you really are. You know, sometimes people don't understand you. <laughs> a lot of people don't understand me. A lot of people don't understand you. Sometimes they even see, they feel that they think you are weird. Say, this one is a weirdo. Because you do not do things the way they do it. You do not say things the way they say it. You do not behave the way you, they behave. They began to look at you as strange. You know, because now the life you live is the life of Christ, not of your own self. And so you there are some places you will go to, there are some people you will be around and they will just be uncomfortable like, we can't connect, we can't, that's because you have two different spirits living in you, controlling you. You have the spirit of light, the life of Christ is in you, the character of Christ is already in you. And don't be, don't feel strange or embarrassed, you know. Our teenagers these days, they can be so ashamed to be, to, to look different because they are not talking about, um, they are not talking like the way the world is talking. Everything about us changed. From the day we got saved, we, we got saved. Everything changes about us. Some people no longer, our friends, even they don't understand anymore. And they walk away. Think something changed about you. But don't be ashamed to declare the name of Christ. Don't be ashamed to tell people whom you are in Christ Jesus. Look at John the Baptist. He was not ashamed to confess the truth. He was not ashamed to tell them whom he was. He said, 23, verse 23 now said, He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. As said the prophet Isaiah, and they which were sent were of the Pharisees, and they asked him and said unto him, Why baptize thou then, if thou be not that Christ, nor Elias, neither the uh, neither that prophet? Okay, John, if you say you are not Christ, I mean you are not Christ. If you say you are not Elias, you are not Elijah, you are not one of the prophets of old. Uh -huh. So why are you baptizing people? Why are you doing what you are doing? 
Why is it that you are doing this thing that you are doing? John was bold enough. John was very bold. If you look at the ministry of John, there was never a time he was afraid of anybody. He would tell them their thoughts straight to their face. He would tell them their problem right there. He was not afraid of anything. He was not afraid to be killed. He was not afraid of anything. He was honest. He was truthful. He faced the truth. But what about us today? What about us today? Any little thing we are shaking. We cannot even declare Christ. We cannot declare our calling. We cannot declare our belief in some areas because of fear. But this is not the case of John. John was bold. God has not given us the spirit of fear. There was no fear in John. There was no fear in John. He boldly, boldly, boldly declared the word of God without fear or favor. They were still finding fault. They were still trying to find fault. Hey, okay, you. If you are not this, you are not that. Why are you baptizing? They couldn't understand. They couldn't understand what was going on. John answered them saying, I baptize with water. But there stand that one among you. Because already Jesus was there already. It's just that his ministry hasn't begun. Whom you knew not. Jesus was among his own. Like that place there. But his own did not recognize him. His own did not know him. God bless you all. You are welcome in Jesus name. He says, yes, I am baptizing you with water. But there stand one among you whom you knew not. It is he who coming after me is preferred before me. He says, whose shoes latchet I am not worthy to, to unloose. This is, this is, look at the humility. Look at the humility of John. He says, there is one, I baptize with water, yes. But there is one greater than me that is coming. There is one bigger than me that is coming. He is going to, he's already here. He is already here, but you don't know him. You don't even recognize him. Jesus was already living amongst them, but they never recognized him as the Messiah. They've been expecting him for years due to the prophecy that they got that the Messiah was going to come. But when the Messiah actually came, no sound. Can you all hear me? Laura Smith says no sound. You can't hear me? If you can hear me, please say yes. It could be your own, uh, your phone, Laura. Check it. Can everyone hear me? Just type yes if you can hear me. I'm seeing somebody saying no sound. Can you hear me? You can hear me. So, Laura, check your phone, please. I think it's your phone. Check your phone. Look at, look at, look at the response of John. He says, this one that is coming after me. This one coming, his shoelace, his shoelace, I am not worthy to even unleash. I cannot even loosen his sandals, his shoelace, I cannot even lose it. I am not qualified. I am not worthy. Look at the, look at the humility. Look at the humility of John the Baptist. How humble are you and I? Me preaching now, me talking to you now, you listening to me. How humble are we? How humble are we? How humble are we? Humility. Humility should pay, play a very big role in our lives as the children of God. Look at John the Baptist was a great man. But yet he was humble unto death. He was humble. This one coming after me. His shoelaces I am not qualified to unleash or to open. I am not even qualified to take off his sandals. The sandals. Look at the level of his humility. And that is why God hates the proud. God Bible says he resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Are you a proud Christian? Look at the humility of John the Baptist. Look at his humility. He put, he did, look at him, my God. He was so humble. These things were done in a better, better barra beyond Jordan, where John was baptizing. Jesus, um, verse 29, it says, the next day, John see Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. You see, remember, <laughs> when Elizabeth, John's mom, was pregnant, and when Jesus' mom, Mary, was pregnant, they saw each other, and they were both pregnant, John and Jesus recognized themselves instantly. 
John and jo jo uh, John the Baptist in their parents' womb, in their mother's womb, they recognize each other. The Bible recorded that the babies, if you read the book of, is in the record of Matthew, that the babies in their womb lived like they rejoiced. They saw each other in their womb. This is a spiritual thing. And now, John was actually seeing Jesus for the first time, but still, based on the Spirit of God, he recognized Jesus. Now, there were other people there that saw Jesus, but they did not know him. They did not recognize him. Can you imagine that? They did not, the Savior was amongst them, but they did not recognize him. He says, and the next day, he says, he said, behold the Lamb of God. Which taketh away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me cometh a man, which is preferred before me. For he was for he was before me. This is John repeating what he said again. And I and I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore am I come baptizing with water. And John bear record saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven. Like a dove, and it abode upon him. And I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same is he which baptized with the Holy Ghost. And I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. John the Baptist did not recognize him, but God told him. That the person coming, you will see the Spirit of God like a dove descending upon him. That is the one you are to baptize. Still talking about Jesus. Revelation. John caught the revelation. God gave him revelations about what was about to happen. Do you know that God will never keep our lives in darkness? When anything is about to happen, if you are connected to him, he will reveal to you most of the times. Most of the times, he will reveal to you. It all boils down to your relationship with him. John had a very solid relationship with God. He knew God. He knew God. He loved God. John the beloved. See, that's why they call him John the beloved. He loved him to the a level, to the extent of laying down his life. To the extent of laying that he was willing to die for him. How strong is your own love for God? Some of us, we love God only when, when he is blessing us. We love God only when he is giving us our heart desires. But by the time he withholds, he, he withholds some things from us. But by the time he withholds, maybe you are asking him for something and he has not answered you. That time you begin to quarrel with him. In fact, some of you, you will stop carrying your Bible. You will even stop going to church. Pastor will be chasing you with phone. What is it? Eh, this one, this one. Did God not see that I need this? Did God not see this? this that, that? We begin to blame God. We begin to quarrel with God. How much? How strong? How deep is your love for God? John the beloved. Look at him. John the beloved. That is when he said, John. When you talk about the book of John, the next thing that comes to your head is John the beloved. He was the beloved of God because he saved God with everything. He had no roof over his head. He had no clothing. He had no food. What was he eating? Locusts. He was just eating incense. Look at it. If we are to put ourselves in the place of John, to be Lord honest, many of us will drop, we will drop our Bible. We will stop serving. Oh God, I've been serving you for one year for this, this, that, that. Nothing is happening. Uh, God, you see, uh, da, da, da. nothing is happening. Nothing is happening. Uh, this one, that one. We'll begin to fight God. But God had a very good relationship with God. I mean, John had a very good relationship with God. How solid is your own relationship with God? How much do you love God? When God is not giving you that thing you so much want, not what you need because he promised to supply all our needs. And he does. Need is what you can, need is what you cannot do without. Want is what you can do without. God can choose not to provide you your wants, but his need, our needs, he will always provide. That is the God we serve. But how deep is your love? When he's not giving you that answer, when he's not giving us that answer, that is when we turn our backs on him. That is when we turn away from him. How deep is your own love for God? You know what that the Bible says? He said, many of us, we draw near to him with our lips, but our heart is far from him. How is your heart with God? 
How solid is your heart, your relationship with God? We are even too busy. Look at John. He spent time in his presence. How many times do we spend? How long do we spend? How much time do we spend in God's own presence? I have a team I'm training. training. We have our, our private group. Sometimes we are there six hours. Six hours. Four hours in his presence. And God will begin to move and reveal things to us. Even in your own personal time, how much time do you spend with God? How important, how is your really how solid is your relationship with God, my brethren? God wants us. See, most of us, we can spend four hours watching one home video. We can spend six hours watching one movie. We can spend six, 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 six hours, three hours, two hours watching movies, watching the news, watching this and that. But how many hours can you give to God in a day? Some of us, you can hardly spend 30 minutes with God. Oh, even on your way, going, oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, I'm sorry, I couldn't pray. I was in a row. But you are never, when you even come back, you will still carry, you will relax, chill, and you'll be watching TV for four hours, three hours. You cannot study your Bible for 30 minutes. You cannot study your Bible for two hours, for one hour. You cannot even pray for one hour or 30 minutes. How strong is your relationship? Brethren, I am here to encourage you, go and build your relationship with God. He says when we draw near to him, he also will draw near to us. I'm just vibrating. His presence is so strong. I'm just from my feet up. I'm just, I'm shivering. I'm vibrating. The heater is on, but I'm just shaking inside. It's the power of the Holy Ghost. How strong God is talking to somebody. Don't be, don't, we just rush into his presence and we rush off. We rush out. Plan your time. Give time to him. He wants to fellowship with you. John had this good relationship with God. That was why he wasn't afraid. That was why he was so humble. That is why he fulfilled his ministry. God is calling you. God wants to use you. But you are running away. I've been running since 2007. The Lord called me. He called me in 2007. In 2007, he told me that he's called me to be an evangelist. I had an encounter with him one day. He began to tell me about my past. He began to tell me about my future. Everything he said about my future, they've come and gone. But I was still running. I would be looking at myself. I am not qualified. I forgot to remember that he's the one that gives grace. It is not by strength. Neither is it by might. Since 2007, I would be saying no. I can't do this. I can't do that. I can look at me now, teaching the word. All trances just comes like that. Insight just comes like that. What about you? How long have you been running? Look at this. John the Baptist was sent ahead of Jesus to prepare his way. As soon as John the Baptist was running, how would Jesus' ministry, would, how would it have been? Jesus is God. It will still be a success. Probably with a, in a different way. God has a way of doing things. But John was able to fulfill his ministry because he was relying on God. And look at this. God revealed the son, the son. Because all this why that they were growing up, they have not met each other for the 30 years. They have not met each other. The first time they saw eye to eye was when Jesus was coming for John to baptize him. And before Jesus come, God already revealed to John, see, telling him, this is the person, this is how you will know that this is my son that I have sent to you. That is because that tells me personally that John has a very good relationship with God and God gives him revelations. God was telling him things that was about to happen. If you and I, me and you, we spend time with God, we have good relationship with him. He will not keep our lives in darkness. There are times things happen in my life. God just reveals it to me through, through, through dream. And I just see it happen. Sometimes you get this revelation, so God wants you to pray about it. It's up boils down to your relationship. It's up boils down. God will begin to open you up. He will begin to give you supernatural insight. God will just begin to open you up. By strength shall no more prevail. It is not by our own power. But I want to encourage somebody. Learn to give God your time. 
Any time you spend before God will never be a waste. It's never a waste. Sometimes it is not about the length. You can be in this, you can think, you may think you are in his presence for one hour, but you are there, your heart, you are, you are there in the body, but your mind is far away. It is the quality, it is the quality of the time you spend with God that counts. You could spend one hour with God and it will count because in that one hour you are so focused. You are so focused. You are so focused. You might spend even spend 30 minutes with him. And in that 30 minutes, you are so focused. And God begins to open you up. And then you can spend two hours and you are filled with distractions. That is when your phone will ring. That is when you want to, you are praying. You are feeling, but you are replying. Let me quickly reply this. Before you know it, you are replying. Before you know it, that is the end of the prayer. It has happened to me in the past. Just when I want to pray, six o'clock in the morning like this. Just when you want, that is when one message, back on, we enter your phone. And then you begin to go from one message to the other, from one message to the other. Before you know it, oh, my time is gone. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for the day. Pram, you are out of the way. Wrong. Let's be focused. Let's be focused. John bear record of whom Jesus is, or whom Jesus was. Verse 35. We are reading, we are doing the Bible series, the book of John. We are going to be looking at the whole book of John. So we are just going to, wherever uh, we stop today, we stop. And then tomorrow we continue from where we stop. But I believe God is speaking to us today in the name of Jesus. You are all welcome. Welcome. Some of you are just joining and some of you have been here. You are welcome in Jesus' name. God bless you. Now let's go. Let's continue reading from, uh, we are reading John chapter 1, verse 35 now. Again the next day, after John stood and two of his disciples, and looking upon Jesus as he was, as he walked and said, Behold the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Now, this is Jesus' uh, first disciples. And Jesus turned and saw them following, and said unto them, What seek ye? They said unto him, unto him Rabbi, which means, which is to say, being interpreted, Master, where dwellest thou? Now, these are Jesus, this is uh, John the Baptist's disciples. The moment they were with John the Baptist, the moment they heard John says, Behold the Lamb of God. These disciples, they left John and they followed Jesus. They switch. There was a supernatural switch. So which is like saying, John had already completed his mission. He had prepared the way for the Lord. He was preaching in the wilderness. He had disciples. But look at that. The moment Jesus came into the picture, when his ministry was about to start, Jesus, John's disciples, they shifted and went to Jesus. And Jesus turned and saw them. He was asking, what, what, what are you looking for? What do you want? And they said, Master, where do you live? Where do you stay? He said unto them, come and see. They came and saw where he dwelt and abode with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. One of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first finded his own brother Simon and said unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. So this one, Anna, Simon Peter went. This was, this was uh, Andrew went. Andrew was the brother to uh, uh, Peter, to Simon Peter, that was following John. And now began to follow Christ. And then he went unto Simon Peter and said, Oh, we have found him. So it means they have been, John has been teaching them about Christ. It means they have been expecting him. And so now they went and said, Oh, the Messiah that we are expecting, he is here now. He Hallelujah. This internet behave. Hallelujah. It says, we have, found, we have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. And he brought him. And he brought him to Jesus. And when Jesus beheld him, he said, Thou art Simon, the son of Jonah. Thou shalt be called Cephas, which is by interpretation a stone. That's as Peter, Peter the rock. This was Peter. It says the day, this is just about the, the Jesus choosing his disciples now. The following, the following day, Jesus, we are reading verse 43. The day following, following Jesus would go forth into Galilee and find that Philip. And said unto him, follow me. Jesus called his, follow me. He met Philip and said, follow me. 
Now Philip was at Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip findeth Nathanael and said unto him, We have found him. <laughs> Look at the people were hungry. They were what they were waiting. Just as we are. How evangelistic are we? Jesus went, he saw his disciples, he recognized them. He saw Philip, follow me. And immediately Philip left what he was doing and he followed. He followed. We have found him of whom Moses the law. He says, We have found him of whom Moses in the law, the law and the prophets did write. Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. We have found him. We have found him. And Nathaniel said unto him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said unto him, Come and see. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? So, what has been coming out of Nazareth? What has been happening in the city of Nazareth? That means there hasn't been things, good things happening in Nazareth. That means there's been ups and downs in Nazareth. He was, Nathaniel was like, can anything good come out of Nazareth? But something great and super came out of Nazareth. And he was asked, come and see for yourself. Come and see for yourself the good things that is happening in Nazareth. Where you are, what is happening? What are you doing with your time? The apostles, they began to go. They began to gather themselves. The disciples, they begin to gather themselves. This one will go and tell this one. Oh, we have been waiting. The Messiah is here now. Oh, that is evangelistic. And that is what God wants us to do. He wants us to go out there and speak the word. He wants us to go out there. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? What is happening in your city? Can anything good come out of your city? Yes. By the power of God, by the power of the Holy Ghost, Jesus is able. We pray for our cities. Are you standing in the gap for your cities? Are you praying for your cities? Are you praying for your nation? It is not enough that we just come and our life is all about us. All you pray about is you. All you know is you. You don't care about your neighbor. You don't care about your city. You don't care about your church. You don't care about the people of God. You don't care about the people of God. Now, this is not the mindset of God's children. Look at the disciples. They went, they, they began to go about, they were looking, searching for each other. They went looking for each other. Oh, the Messiah is here. How many people are you telling about the love of God? How many people have you preached to? Even with your character. Do you know that today, Christians, today people do no longer read their Bible? We are the Bible that they read. So what are you displaying? What are you portraying? What is coming out of you? What are people seeing about you? Is the life of Christ, the example of Christ, being seen in you, in your community, being seen, seen in you by your neighbors, by your place of work, or they see you as this quarrelsome person, this a person that is not a good person, this person that is always insulting, cursing, or what is coming out of you? How are you affecting your generation? How are you affecting your community? Look at the, 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 the disciples. They went about, they began to locate each other. Oh, the Messiah is here. Jesus, uh, Jesus saw Nathaniel coming to him and said to, to him, Behold an Israelite, indeed in whom is no guy. Jesus. I want to read it with this. With this uh, easy to read version again. I want to break that place down. Look at what Jesus said about Nathaniel. Look at what he said. He did not tell anything like that. About the rest of the apostles, uh, disciples. Look at what he said. Nathaniel, when Jesus saw. When. See, Jesus saw Nathaniel coming to him. And said to him, behold an Israelite. Indeed. In, not in words. Indeed. In action. An Israelite indeed. In whom is no guy. That means Nathaniel was a righteous man. That means Nathaniel was born again. 47. We are now in John chapter 1 verse 47. Let me read it with my this uh, version. Let, uh, uh, verse 47. Jesus saw Nathaniel coming towards him and said, This man coming is a true Israelite. One you can trust. My God, one you can trust. Look at what God had to say about Nathaniel. One you can trust. What is God saying about me and you? Can he trust us? Can he trust you and I? 
Can God trust you? He says, He says, This man is, this man coming is a true, true, true Israelite. One you can trust. So, already before Nathaniel come, before he even come, his heart is a counter. He was trustworthy. Can your pastor trust you? What is your pastor saying about you? What is your church saying about you? What is your leadership saying about you and I? Are we dependable? Are we reliable? Hey, hey. <laughs> Holy Ghost. Jesus. It's not funny. Can you be trusted? Can you be trusted with anything? Even pastors, most pastors don't trust their fellow pastors. Most pastors don't trust, don't trust their fellow pastors. <laughs> because one day they will just break off and they will carry half of the church and go and start their own congregation. Hey, can your leadership, your leaders trust you in the church? Can your church depend on you? Can your friends touch you? Do you know there are some times, there are some people they know that you know that there is no time. Even if you call this sister 3 a.m. in the midnight with your problem, she will answer you. Oh, they know that when, when you are in need, you can just go to this person and you know you will be encouraged. What role are you playing in the body of Christ? Nathan says, go, Jesus, this one. He wasn't advertising himself. Nathaniel was not advertising himself. He actually had not said anything to Jesus. He was only coming. And Jesus was already saying this about him. That is truly, that is the true Israelite. The one you can trust. The one you can rely on. The one you can depend on. Jesus. The one that you can depend on. Can you be trusted? Can the body of Christ trust you? Can Jesus trust you? Can your pastor trust you? Can your leadership trust you? Can your friends trust you? Can the people around you trust you? That when they are in this situation, when they are going through this, you will be there. You will be there. Who can you? What, what can be said about you? What can be said about me? I'm talking to myself as much as I'm talking to you. The words are convicting me as much as I think it. I feel it's convicting some of you. Can you be trusted? Do you know there are people in the church they cannot be trusted? You cannot trust them with this position in the church. You cannot trust them with that position in the church. Because once they get that position, something else takes over them. Can you be trusted to handle that situation? Can you be trusted? Some of you people come and confide in you. They tell you their problem. You are supposed to be your brother's keeper. You are supposed to be your sister's keeper. And they come to you in confidence. They come to you in trust. And then you go, oh, God, God will see you through. And the next thing, hey sister, hey, did you see? Did you see? Ha, ha. I said, you begin to broadcast that issue. You begin to narrate that person. That is one big problem that we have today in the body of Christ. People do not trust some of their past, some pastors anymore. No confidentiality anymore. You are a man or a woman of God listening to me now. A member will come to you. A member will tell you their secrets. Oh, thank God for my pastors. I love them. Oh, I thank God for them. Truly. I can stay before them and just naked myself and not feel ashamed. I can stand before them and say all the deepest things in my heart. I not feel ashamed. That is whom they are. How comfortable they've made us to be in their presence. You, a man of God, can your members trust you? With their secret. You know, we have some deep, deepest, deep secrets. Like things that happen in our past that you are not comfortable sharing with anybody. But there are these men of God that God has given grace. And you will just, you just know, you can feel it. That when you confide in them, when you tell them this thing that you've been carrying for ages, you are saved. Your secret is saved. It's secure. And you trust that they'll be able to strengthen you. You trust that they'll be able to encourage you. They, you trust that they will bring out the best in you. My pastors brought out the best in me. What about you that is a man or a woman of God? 
They encourage me to be the best that God has created me to be. What about you that is a pastor? Can your member trust you with their secrets? Your members will come to you with their secrets. And you begin to share it with one person in the church. You share it with the second person with the church. You share it with that person in the church. Before you know it, the whole congregation, the secret is open. The secret is open. It's no longer a secret. And because of that, what you are, is not even about you. Even you as a child of God, people confide in you. They told, tell you their secrets. Do you go about sharing it with other people? Oh, the other day, this person said, oh, I know, she said, she said that. Before you know it, the world begins to go around. And that sister that opened up, or that brother that opened up to you and told you their secret, begins to, it begins to filter into their ears. The things they share with you in confidence, it becomes a public news. It dies a shame. If you are such a person, repent. Look at it. Jesus said, Nathaniel can be trusted. Can you and I be trusted? Can you and I be trusted? Can God trust us with anything? Even with his blessings, can God trust you with his blessings? Oh, God bless me, I need a car. God bless me, I need children. God bless me, I need a house. God bless me, I need this, I need that. And God blesses you. Oh, God bless you, Sister Shirley Garcia from Indiana. You are welcome in Jesus' name. You are all welcome in the name of Jesus. Can you be trusted? Yes, Walker. It's this. It's this happening. It's happening. It's happening. If you are one of such person from Asia, God bless you. If you are one of such person, repent. When people confide in you, keep it to yourself. Don't let your tongue scratch you, scratch you, scratch you. You begin to divulge it to others. You begin to tell those secrets to others. God will hold you responsible. Nathaniel, the Bible says, God, Jesus said, he can be trusted. What about me? Can I be trusted? What about you listening to my voice? Can you be trusted? Can we, you and I, be trusted? Can we be trusted? The body of Christ. Even you, can God trust you? You are asking God, I need this. I need that. And God decides to try, try you. He gives you that blessing. Do you know? I want children. Oh, God bless me with children. You are going to church every day, every day you are in church. You go for Bible study. You go for prayer meeting. You are in the church 247. And then the children begins to come. God blesses you with child number one. Child number two, child number three. And then the next thing, sister will begin to come late to church. The next thing you will come, you come, I'm sorry I can't come to church today. You begin to sister and they'll be looking, using phone to chase. Ah, ah. You are the one that is supposed to head the ushers today. Where are you? I am sorry, yo. It is my children. My children. Do you imagine? Oftentimes, we use the blessings of God as an excuse to be late to church. We use the blessings of God as an excuse not to do, perform our duties in the church. We use the blessings of God. Oh, Benny, are you watching from Jerusalem? God bless you. That is the city of God. <laughs> Benny, God bless you. Can you imagine that? You begin to use the blessings of God in your life as an excuse. May God have mercy on you. You will call some people. Even, ah, my children, no. They couldn't wake up at time. My children, but God is the one that gave you these children. But these same children you are using as an excuse not to go to church. These same children you are using as an excuse not to go to church or as an excuse to come late to church. You, they are not an excuse for you not to go to work. You are resuming your job, your secular job. You are resuming seven in the morning. You have made provision for your children before then. And you are on time in church, um, in your job. You are on time in your place of work. Your children does not disturb you. Your children does not disturb you from going uh, early, uh, late, uh, early to, uh, late or early to work. You make provision. But when it is time for God. See because God is merciful. God is just merciful. <clears throat> God is only being merciful. We need to be careful. Be careful. Be careful. Some of you is your house. There was a pastor that was preaching. He said there was this sister. She was always trusting God for a house. This sister was so faithful. She comes to church all the time and God decided to bless her. God gave her a house and this house was big. 
she had their conditions. And now this sister, she will always come for video when she was trusting God. Trusting God for this, trusting God for that. She will always be in the church for night video. She will be in church for church, in church for church programs. She will be in church all the time. When the blessings of God began to came uh, to come, when it's time for vigil, sister, we say the church is too hot. Let's do the vigil in my house. I have air condition. In an air condition, sister, I don't want to come to church again for vigil. She wants. She become too comfortable. That is how most of us are. We are asking God for this blessing. We are asking God for that blessing. And God decides to bless us. We get so comfortable in that blessing. That we will not begin to, we'll begin to take God for granted. We we'll begin to take his mercies, his grace for granted. Pride comes in. Selfishness comes in. You become self-centered. I heard another story. Uh, uh, a man of God was also preaching about this sister in the choir. She had the best voice. God blessed her with the best, best voice in the choir. The best voice in the choir. And in case she began to notice and realize that, oh, without her, the choir cannot really perform very well. So the choir need her. And so before you know it, to start come for choir practice, she will be sluggish. She began to slack. She began to use the gift of God as, a, as, 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 began to trade and play with the gift of God upon her life. Forgetting that God is the one that gives. And he can take if he decides to. This sister, they will be looking for her. They will be looking for her. Call, we need it. She will be coming late. She will be making excuses. She, because she feels like, she felt like, oh, they don't have any choice. They have to wait for me. God waits for no man. God waits for no man. If God wants to do something, he does it. He waits for Kayata. If God wants to do something, he does it. He does it. He waits for no man. I'm getting an international call. For my sister. Please excuse me for one minute. Let me find that. God waits for nobody. And you know this sister. One day she fell down. She fell down this, this stairs. And she heard her, her voice. And that was how she lost her voice. That was how she lost her voice. That gift that God gave to her. He took it back. And before you knew it, somebody else in the choir began to grow. Somebody in the choir began to sing even better than that sister. Before you know it, that is how she lost her voice. That beautiful voice, which it was gone. And the Lord gave that gift to somebody else in the choir. And God raised that person in the choir. God raised the person. And that sister, lived. see, whatever the Lord has given to you, whatever gift that God has given to you, he gave it to you because he wants you to use it for his glory. He wants you to use it for his honor. Not to be proud with it. Not to be proud with it. Hmm. Look at the, 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 the story of the talents. I know we are going to get there. Hello? Perfect. You like one? Kyo? Mm -hmm. mm. mm. uh, please, one minute. Eh? Uh, sorry, I'm speaking my language. This is international. I need to know what's going on. Eh? I'll call you. You know, I'm back in the online video now. I can't really talk, so I'll call you back. When I finish, I'll call you, okay? Sorry, that is my younger sister back home in Nigeria. You know, now when you get Nigeria call, you, you need to answer. And I'm their mom. Our mother is late. And I'm the oldest in the family. So when anything is going on, they call me. And I don't joke with them. I don't joke with their calls. So pardon me. Eh? I will call her back when I finish. Hallelujah. So somebody else in the... Somebody else got that gift. So whatever gift... Where am I from? I'm from Nigeria. I'm from Nigeria. So whatever gift the Lord has given to you. Use it for his glory. Use it for his glory. He, he trusts you. That is why he gave that gift to you. He trusts you. That is why he gave it to you. Hallelujah. Let's carry on. 
So can God trust you? Can your brethren trust you? Can your church trust you? Can your leadership in church trust you? Can your neighbors trust you? Can your, can your colleagues trust you? Jesus said to Nathaniel, Behold an Israelite indeed, in whom is no guy. <laughs> in whom there is no guy. Nathaniel said unto him, Hence knowest thou me? Me? Jesus answered and said unto him, Before that, before that Philip called thee, when thou was under the fig tree, I saw thee. So Jesus already saw Nathaniel, even before Nathaniel came to him. Nathaniel answered and said unto him, Rabbi, thou art the son of God, thou art the king of Israel. Jesus answered and said unto him, Because I said unto you, I saw thee under the fig tree. Believest thou, thou shalt see great, greater things than this. And he said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Hereafter, Ye shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. From this day henceforth, you are going to begin to see your eyes will be open till you begin to see the manifestations of God's glory. He was saying to Nathaniel, You haven't seen anything yet. We have not seen anything yet. You know, when God says, Eyes have not seen, neither has ears he heard, nor neither has it entered into the heart of man. What God have in store for us is children. Nathaniel, you've seen nothing yet. You've not seen anything yet. You are going to see. You are going to see. You need to believe. Oh, are you just believing now? Because I said to you, I saw you before. You haven't seen anything. You are verily, verily, I am assuring you. Truly, truly, I am guaranteeing, giving you this guarantee. The hereafter, hey, you will see heaven open. You shall see the angels. You will see them ascending and descending before the Son of Man. You will see the glory of God. You will see the glory of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Just look at that. Just look at that. We just finished chapter 1. And it's glorious. It's flooded. John chapter 1 is loaded. The whole book of John is loaded. If God gives you spiritual insight, it is loaded. I believe there are things you discover that you never knew in this book of John. Who is tired? Do you want us to stop in chapter 1 that will continue from 2 tomorrow? Or do you want us to, to read maybe a half of chapter 2? Hallelujah. It's already 8, 8.30 here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm still strong. <laughs> Who is tired? Is anybody tired here? Hallelujah. Look at that. Some of you are just keep going. Sister Tanya, I know you can be here for four hours. <laughs> keep going. Who wants us to continue or do you want us to stop here? We just finished chapter one now. Keep going. Wow. How many of us want to keep going? You want us to keep going. Should we continue or stop in chapter one? <laughs> Tell me, do you want us to keep going? Shelly, is it you don't want to stop? Shelly, no, so we should continue. <laughs> Hallelujah! So, you guys are not tired. Ooh, glory! Not tired. Okay, let's carry on with chapter two. Then, let's carry on with chapter two. But I'm sweating though, I don't know why I'm feeling so hot. I'm just sweating. Hallelujah. Okay, let's carry on with chapter 2 then. Hey, keep going. <laughs> you guys are amazing. Eh? So that means God is, you are all, um, you are getting blessed. Eh? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Rada da shanta rete kayata. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Okay, let's continue with chapter 2. We're going to... Let's continue with chapter 2. We are reading now. You can type John chapter 2. We've read John... John actually, type John chapter 1 and then 2. So we are starting... Let's go from verse 1 of John chapter 2. I'm lost without you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. My son, that I will shoot you. 
<laughs> Hallelujah. I hope you are not. I hope some of us are writing all these spots. You go and watch the video again, and anywhere that ministers to you, just write, note it down. Does anybody have anything to say? On, uh, before we continue to chapter 2, really, let me ask, does anyone have anything to say about chapter 1? Does anybody have anything to say regarding it? Do you want to contribute? Does anybody say study? Yes, John 1, chapter 2. Does anyone have anything to say? I can bring you on video so you can say something. If you were blessed, you want to say something about chapter 1. This is study, it's Bible study. So we cannot share. If you are a minister here, you have anything to share, I can bring you on. Jesus loves uh, up. I mean, you mean us so much. Yes, that's true, Sister Tani. Jesus loves us. He loves us so much. Does anybody have anything to say or contribute or you gained something or you want to say something? Yes, I know that's what you are, you are saying. Whew, hallelujah. Okay, but is, is anybody following and understanding what we are saying? We say thank you so much. Regardless, amen. Thank you, Father. Okay, let's continue with uh, chapter 2. Let's continue with chapter 2. Whew, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. And the third day, there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee. Hope you have your Bible with you. So open your own Bible to John chapter 2. And the third day, there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee. And the mother of Jesus was there. Now there was marriage in, in Canaan of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. So both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the marriage. And when they and when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto him, They have no wine. <laughs> Look at this. So. Now there is a marriage. There is a wedding. Mary, the mother of Jesus, was invited. Jesus himself and his disciples were invited to that marriage. And then they finished drinking all their wine. There was no more wine. And then Jesus, and then they were, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, the mother of Jesus, Mary went to Jesus and says, that the mother says, they have no wine. She just went to her son. I said, they have no wine. Now, look at that. Look at the relationship between the, a mother and a son. Jesus is the Savior, yes. But he had relationship with his mother. For the mother to boldly go before him. I said, there is no wine. <laughs> look at what Jesus said to him. Jesus said unto her, woman, what have I to do with you? What can I do with you? What can I do with you? My hour is not yet come. My time is not yet come. <laughs> Jesus said to the mother, Woman, what have I to do with you? My hour is not yet come. Eh? Look at, look at, look at, um, look at verse 5. He said, His mother said to the servants, Whatsoever he said unto you, do it. Which means the mother understands her son. As much as the son understand, his mom. Even though Jesus was born of the Holy Spirit. Can you look at this scenario now? Mother um, Mary is the earthly mother of Jesus. But Jesus was born to be her savior. Jesus was born to be her king. I'm looking at that. Why, why not do a chapter day when we will get the chance to ask questions or to contribute and also to pray? Yes, that is what I said. Who has anything like that is why, but nobody saying anything. I asked in the, in the beginning, I asked before I enter chapter two now. I paused and asked, does anybody have any question? Yeah, that makes sense though, to do it day by chapter, one chapter a day because... I've seen like, 
the one chapter we did now took us like one and a half hour just one chapter you see because because of the insight we were receiving it took us like one and a half hour so i need somebody to say something about chapter one but nobody's saying anything i will bring you on video and um, yeah it makes sense that's a good suggestion that's a good look at somebody suggested she said why not do uh, a chapter a day that is to do one chapter each day then we will get the chance to ask questions or to contribute and also to pray so she wants us to pray like i get it like when we do a chapter when we do a chapter we contribute we ask questions and then anybody can contribute and then we can also pray we can also pray about that chapter it makes sense to pray about the chapter yeah but i asked does anybody have any question nobody said anything <clears throat> regarding chapter one is there any place you don't understand is there any place you have a question is there anything you want you want more clarity on this is bible study you know we are doing this bible study together it's it it, it should be like interactive interactive even if you have a question you can type your question and anybody can also answer the question yeah let me see i'm trying to read yes 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 it was a powerful message that's right but does anybody have any question regarding chapter one before we continue i asked before though does anybody have any question or contribution i can bring you on video so that you can also you know talk to us what you understand what you feel about this chapter one I'm trying to read your comments. Does anybody have anything to say? Nobody is talking. You are all looking at me, eh? Does anybody have any contribution? Nobody. So that means it's very clear, right? That's why the first verses. Sister Jane, do you need clarity on anything? Do you understand it or do you want to contribute on anything? Or you have a question? Do you have a question regarding um, the book of uh, John? John chapter 1, the verse 1. Mask under the bush. So we have to carry on. I will carry on with chapter 2. And uh, tomorrow, we will just do, uh, we, we are going to pray tomorrow. We will pray pre briefly. But just in this chapter 2, my plan is to do the first part and then we can pray. I want us to do this first part before we pray. We're going to do, we are going to read, uh, we are going to study just uh, verses, one to, verses 1 to 11. We are going to do just verses 1, verses 1 to 11 in this chapter 2. And then tomorrow, that is my plan anyway. I did not plan to finish the whole chapter 2. My plan is to read, read this first part of, because this first part is loaded too. The Lord is going to speak to us. From chapter 2, uh, John chapter 2, verses 1 to 11. We are going to stop in verses 11. And then we are going to discuss. Everybody will discuss on this one. You are going to air your view because some of you are still, let's continue. Some of many of us are still guilty with this. We are going to stop there. We are going to stop, stop in verse 11 and then we are going to talk. So now listen to this. Um, I'm going, I have to read again, like, because I was caught off, like kind of caught off in the spirit. So I have to start again. And the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee and the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they and when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto him, They have no wine. Jesus said unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? My hour is not come yet. 
Now we stopped here. His mother said unto the servants, look, oh, whatsoever he said unto you, do it. So this tells me that Mary understands her son. Although she's the physical mother, he knows that his son carries power. He knows his son can do anything. He knows his son is God. But yet, he's still related to him as, his, as her son. Say, so they don't have one, no. So, which means, ah, son, there is a problem that you can solve. And Jesus said, what have I to do with you, woman? My hour have not come. But look at this. Mary did not answer. He did not even bother, bother to exchange words with Jesus. All she said to the servant is, whatever he says you should, because he knows that there is good in Christ. He knows that God will always prove himself. And he said to the servant, anything he asks you to do, do it. And there was said, and there, and there we are said, uh, there six water pots of stone after the manner of the purifying of the Jews containing two or three fekins apiece. Jesus said unto them, fill the water pot with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he said unto them, draw out now and, and bear unto the governor of the feast. And they bear it. When the ruler of the feast had tasted, tasted the water that was made wine, and knew not whence it came, whence it was, but the servant which drew the water knew. The governor of the feast called the bridegroom, and he said unto him, Every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine. And when men have well drunk, they, they that then that which is worse. But thou keepest the good wine until now. The 11 says, This beginning. This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Canaan of Galilee and manifested forth his glory and his, disip his disciples believed on him. Now his disciples has been following on to now. And this further kind of encouraged them. They believed in Jesus. But that is not the point here I want to make out. Why? <laughs> now, Jesus was invited to this wedding feast. You know, Jesus and his disciples, they were there. But do you notice something? The Bible did not record that Jesus and his disciples were drinking wine, but they were there. There is no verse. Let me read it with this easy to read. Say two days after there was wedding in the town of Canaan in Galilee and Jesus' mother was there. Jesus and his followers were also invited. At the wedding, there was not enough wine. At the wedding, there was Jesus' mother said to him, they have no more wine. Jesus answered, answer, dear woman, why are you telling me this? It is not yet time. Does the Bible approved? Does the Bible, uh, David, you're asking, does the Bible approve that a man and woman living together if they are not, uh, not legally married? No. No, 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 no. The Bible says a man shall leave his parents' house. Likewise, the woman will leave her parents' house, and then they shall cleave together, and they too shall become one flesh. It is not approved of God. It is not. Now, it's a little bit complicated as in, there are some people that have been in relationship, maybe for years, and they have children, and then they were not born again, and then they got born again. But the moment you get born again, Bible says you are to desire, you are to you are to take yourself out of anything sexual relationship. Having sex before marriage is wrong, and you living together, it takes the grace of God for you not to fall into the sin of fornication or adultery. If you are not legally married and you are living together, it takes God's grace, and that is why it is not advisable at all that couples that are unmarried should be living together under one roof. If you are a born again child of God or you are born again children of God. But sometimes like when children are involved, when children are involved and you're already in this relationship and then you got born again. Well, I don't know what, you, what you're going to do. Two, two options. 
If you can stay, I don't know, but Bible does not, to answer it straight away, the Bible does not, did not approve of it. It is not biblical at all. But there are some situations where couples, couples are, are have children, they are living together already as couples and they are not married. It is wrong. But from when you get born again, the Bible says marriage is honorable and the bed on the fire. Like some people have seen like couples, like, but they got separated because one got born again and the other one is not born, they born again yet. And being that they have accommodation issues. So they have accommodation issues. And then they come to an understanding that, well, you have to be sleeping separately in that room. And I'll be sleeping separately in this room. They have, they, they, there shouldn't be any sexual relationship between us. So if you have that kind of understanding until you sort yourself out, make sure that you do not defy your body that is the temple of God. Make sure, make sure you do not have any sex. Sex, you must cancel sex out of that relationship until you get married. So it is not approved by God. It is not godly. Hallelujah. So if there are no children involved and um, you, uh, you can sort your accommodation issues and all of that, it is better to flee. So in order to, the Bible says, flee ye all appearance of evil or, or sin or, you know, fornication. So the more you are living together, the someday you might be tempted. So it's better to be separated. That is the gospel truth. So now, let's go back to our study for today. And so now, look at this. He said his mother and dad said there were six light pots filled. Jesus said to the servant, fill the water pots. So they filled it. Then, now, dip out some water and take it to the man, man in charge of the feast. So they did what he said. Then the man in charge tested it, but the water had become wine. He did not know where the wine had come from, but the servant who brought the water knew. He called the bridegroom and said to him, People always serve the best wine first. Later, when the guests are drunk, they serve the cheaper wine. But you have uh, saved the best wine until now. This was the first of all the miraculous signs Jesus did. He did it in the town of Canaan in Galilee. By this, he showed his divine greatness and his followers, and his followers believed him. Now, hmm. When it comes to alcohol in the Christendom, there are, there, you know, there are contradictions. Many Christians believe, many people actually use this passage to say, Oh, Jesus turned water into wine. Therefore, we can drink, but we shouldn't get drunk. We should drink. I used to believe that. Drink, but don't get drunk. I'm a Christian. As at this time, I'm a worker. As at this time, but I believe in drink, but don't get drunk. And as at that time, I'm not a drink, an alcoholic person. I hardly drink. Maybe once in a while, back in the days, I would take maybe half a glass of, uh, the only one is Irish cream. That is the only drink, alcohol that I can drink. Some of you Christians, you are still drinking. We are going to go into this study. We have to study about this. We have to dig deep a little bit. Now, listen. Now, Jesus, although Jesus and his mother were invited, his disciples were invited. There is no Bible verse that recorded that Jesus drank that wine. The only thing it recorded was that Jesus turned water into wine. Jesus did not drink the wine. Now, we can say that Jesus was living by example. His disciples, the Bible did not record that they drank wine or they were drunk. Are we following? The Bible did not record that Mary drank wine. The children of God were in that party, but the Bible did not record that they drank wine. People use this as, as a kind of excuse to drink. Oh, drink, but don't get drunk. Uh, drink, but don't get... Now, let me ask. What good has alcohol? Uh, what is the good in alcohol? Can somebody answer me? What is the good in alcohol? What is the good in alcohol? Let's go to the book of Judges. Let's go to the book of Judges. Let's go to the book of Judges. This is about Samson. Look at this instruction. We're going to read from, from 1. 
Open your Bible to the book of Judges. Somebody type it for me, please. Judges, chapter 1 from verse 1. Now, after the death of Joshua, it came to pass that the children of Israel asked the Lord, saying, Who shall go up for us against the Canaanites first? Judges. Yes. Judges. Judges, chapter 1. We are starting from, we are reading the... No, actually, let's go to Judges 13, not chapter 1. Judges 13. I want, let's read about... Um, Let's go. Let's let's read about Samson in the book of Judges, chapter chapter thirteen. Judges chapter thirteen. And the children of Israel did evil against the um, again uh, again in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hands of the Philistines forty years. And here was a certain man of Zorah, of the family of the Danites. Uh, whose name was Manoah, and his wife was barren and bare not. His wife had no child. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman and said unto her, Behold, now thou art barren and bearest not, but thou shalt conceive and bear a son. Judges, yes, God bless you. And thou shalt conceive and bear a son. Now therefore, beware, I pray thee, and drink not wine, nor strong drink, and eat not any unclean thing. Look at that instruction. So, this... Man, these couples, they were barren. They had no child. This is the birth of Samson. When the prophecy about the birth of Samson was given, the instruction for them was that they should not drink any wine or any strong drink. Why would God say that? They shouldn't drink any wine or any strong drink. Which means it is not a good thing. It is not a good thing. Leaders of churches today, you are drinking wine and alcohol. You say, Bible say, drink and don't get drunk. Drink, but uh, don't get drunk. But remember what the Bible says. In 1 Timothy, in 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 3, it says, take a little wine for your stomach or an illness. If you are sick, so, you which me saying, which other was saying is, if you want to drink wine, go and be praying for stomach pain. Take a little wine for your stomach or an illness. Actually, there are alcohol is being used in some in some uh, medications. Alcohol is being used as preservations, yes. But as a child of God, as a child of God that is heaven bound, there is nothing good in alcohol. There is nothing good in alcohol. Jesus turned water into wine, yes. Remember, he was asked, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and to God what is God's. But he never took part in the drinking of the wine. His disciples never took part in the drinking of the wine. He never. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 19 and 20. Let's see what it's saying there. Bible students, I hope you have your Bible. 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 6. We are going to talk. Oh, everybody is going to contribute for this one because all of us, we are guilty. We are guilty. We are guilty. Hallelujah. First Corinthians. Can you can somebody type it for me, please? First Corinthians chapter six. No, six. This is fifteen. First Corinthians chapter six. Verses 19 and 20. Let's see what it says. It says, what? It says, what? With a, what? This is King James. King James says, what? With a question mark. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? Yes, First Corinthians says, verses 19 and 20. What? If you read, if you read from before then, 
Like Sansa says that just because they say, but he that is joint unto joint unto Lord is one spirit. So now when you become Christ, you are one spirit with God. You that is joined unto the Lord, you are one spirit with God. Flee fornication, flee, flee everything that a man doeth is uh, is um flee every flee fornication. Everything that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committed fornication sinned against his own body. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of, of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? Saying, what? Don't you know your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? Don't you know that your body is where the Holy Ghost lies? You are the carrier of the Holy Spirit. For ye are bought with a price. The uh, therefore glorify God in your body. Tell me what is glorifying in alcohol? Glorify God in your body. When you take alcohol, you take it with your mouth and it goes into your body, it goes into your belly. Baby, is this is by saying that your body is the temple of God. For you are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. In your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Jesus turned water into wine. Therefore, does that give you permission to be drinking alcohol? Alcohol, it, it may not be a sin. It may not be a sin, but what is good about it? Actually, to be honest, I don't believe that drinking of alcohol is a sin. The Bible says, take a little one for your stomach. He turned water into wine. But how many times did you see Jesus drinking wine? How many times did you see his disciples drunken with wine? How many times? And then look at the spirit that is behind alcohol is a very bad one. Alcohol is very, is demonic and influential. The spirit that controls alcohol is demonic and influential. And the devil have used alcohol to ruin many lives. I have witnessed people. People that alcohol have destroyed their lives completely. From one glass, they went to two glass. From two glasses, they went, oh, before you know it, they're taking one bottle. And before you know it, they're taking three bottles. Before the day, they are taking five bottles. My God. And before you know it, they are too, they are too carried away to even pray. They are too carried away to, before you know it, salvation is gone. Alcohol has nothing good to offer you. Alcohol have nothing good to give to you. Whether it's a teaspoon or a tablespoon or a glass, there is nothing good. Your body is the temple of God. If you are a born again child of God and you are still into alcohol, repent. Stay away. Bible says anything we do that will stand, that you think will stand as a stumbling block to your brother, to your sister from being born again, desist from it. Stay away. There is contradictions regarding alcohol. Some say drink and don't drink. But why did God say to Samson's parents, they should not, he specifically instructed them not to take alcohol or any fermented drink. Any fermented drink. Because there is nothing good in it. There is nothing good in it. There is nothing good in it. Yes, drunkenness is a sin. But to, drunkenness starts with just one drop of alcohol. It starts with just a drop of alcohol. So if you don't drink alcohol, what will happen to you? Can somebody answer me? If you choose, I choose not to drink anymore. Not because I believe it is sin, but because it's got nothing good to offer. Even health-wise, alcohol is bad for your system. Alcohol is good for, is bad for your kidneys. It is bad for your liver. Alcohol has some health damage. Alcohol had some health damage. In Daniel chapter 5, when we read down, we will see there that alcohol, um, the alcohol will do us no good, but to take us away from the presence of God. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. See that contribution now from one sister here. It says from the, in the book of Daniel, it says when you read from chapter 5 down, it says we will see that Dear, we see dear that alcohol will do us no good, but to take us away from the presence of God. So what is in alcohol anyways, that we get addicted to, that we cannot do away with anymore? Alcohol has got nothing, nothing whatsoever. 
Look at that. Look at that. Go and read your Daniel chapter 5 from down. It says alcohol will take you from the presence of God. Because he's got nothing good to offer. Alcohol have nothing good. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter, uh, uh, chapter 3 verse 16 and 17. 16. It's repeating the same thing. Know ye not that you are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defy the temple of God, he, uh, him shall uh, God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which, which temple ye are. Look at that. Look at that. If any man defy the temple of God, him shall God destroy. I pray that God will not destroy us. Alcohol will destroy the temple of God. Because when you get drunk, you begin to mess around. You begin to, you know, nothing good. For the temple of God is holy. The temple, there is nothing holy about alcohol. There is nothing holy about alcohol. Which temple you are? You are God's temple. You belong to God. Yes. You are His. You are His. Oh, Jesus. Are we catching it? Are we, we are going to stop here. And then we are going to contribute. Everybody will contribute. You will tell me your own opinion about alcohol you tell us what do you think if you are born again and you are still drinking alcohol you have to repent to you have to repent because your body is the temple of god you are defiling god's temple alcohol holy spirit lives in you what is alcohol doing in your body what good as alcohol what is the health benefit of alcohol what is the health benefit of alcohol what is the health benefit of alcohol Look at what, uh, somebody should type this for me again. Romans 12, from verses 1 and 2. Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that he present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Which is your reasonable service. I beseech you, brethren, please type it for me. Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world. People of the world are drinking alcohol. They are conformed to this world. Jesus was in that marriage. He turned water into wine, but he didn't drink it. No, the Bible did not record that Jesus drank. The Bible did not. If he did, it would have been recorded that he drank. Although he turned it into wine. He says, I be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind that he may prove. What is that good? What is good and acceptable? What is good? That you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Tell me, what is the good to prove in alcohol? What is the, the thing to, be, to prove in alcohol? What is it? Many people believe that alcohol is a sin. Many people believe that, oh, it's not as long as you are not drunk. But what is there to prove? What is there? What is good? Be not conformed to this word. <laughs> God is he's already convicting some of us. He's already, he's already convicting some of us. Mashanda da da bos kende de bos. La ta 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 rete ke lete kayata. Jesus. Jesus. Are we following are we following? Mask and that a boy she did it. Was in the are we following? Look, I want to read it again. It's powerful. I beseech you, dear, for brethren, by the mercies of God, that He presents your bodies a living sacrifice. Now, you are defiling your body with alcohol. How are you going to present that same body? A living sacrifice. Holy. Say, Professor. David. Holy. What is holy about alcohol? Alcohol that people will drink, they will sleep in the gutters. Alcohol that people will drink, 
that they will forget, they will start beating their wives. Alcohol that people will drink, it will damage their kidneys, damage their livers. Tell me what is good, what is holy, what is holy about alcohol? Oh, as long as I take a little. Health-wise, we are advised to stay away from alcohol even. Doctors, this one has even nothing to do with spirituality now. It has nothing to do with Christianity. Doctors are advising you stay away from uh, cigarettes, stay away from alcohol. Some of you, it has become an addiction. You cannot do without it. You are addicted to alcohol. You are addicted to cigarettes. You are addicted to porno. You are addicted to other things. The Lord will deliver you today in the name of Jesus. It says that you should present your body as a living sacrifice. Holy, acceptable unto God. So what is holy? Holy in alcohol. Which is your reasonable service? Two, uh, two says... And be not conformed. We are reading Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. Romans 12. Somebody type Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. And be not conformed to this world. People go to church. Does that make them a Christian? There are some churchgoers in that wedding that Jesus turned into wine. They drank the wine. But maybe they don't have the Holy Ghost in them. But be not conformed to this world. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That ye may prove what is good. That ye may prove, brethren, prove what is good. What is good in alcohol? You are a child of God. Holy Ghost feed. God bless you. Child of God. Holy Ghost feed. You can't do without alcohol. My God. That you may prove what is that good. An acceptable and perfect will of God. Alcohol is not in the will of God. Alcohol is not. It is not. We are going to end it with this one. Then we are going to go into question and answer and contributions. Philippians. Let's go to Philippians. Can somebody open the book of Philippians for me? Philippians 4. Let's see what this Philippians is 4 is talking about. We are going to end with this now. Let me see the time. Excuse me. Philippians 4. We are going to read verse 8. Philippians 4, 8. Can you type it please? Philippians 4, 8. God bless you all. And those of you that are typing, God bless you in the name of Jesus. Philippians 4, verse 8. Let's read this. We are ending with this Philippians 4, 8. Finally, brother, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, Whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, what is pure, what is honest, what is just about alcohol, whatsoever things are lovely, tell me what is lovely about alcohol, whatsoever things are of good report, <laughs> what is the good report concerning alcohol? What, yes, which good report does alcohol have? Tell me, people that drink alcohol, tell me, share me your experience. What is the good report? Says, what is our good report? If there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Think on these things. I want to read it again. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, Whatever things are honest, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report. If there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think of these things. Let me even read nine. Let me even add nine to it. These things which you have heard, which you have learned, and received, and heard, and seen in me. Do and the God of peace shall be with you. How many times did you see Jesus drinking wine? How many times did you see the apostles drinking wine? They were busy preaching the gospel, they were breach, busy evangelizing from one city to the other. He says, This those things which you have both learned. What have you learned from God? What have you learned from the apostles? And received and heard. Did you hear that Jesus was going about drinking alcohol? or his disciples, or his, ap his apostles later on, and seen in me. How many times did you see Jesus drinking wine? He says, do. 
what you have heard, what you have seen in Jesus, do. And the God of peace shall be with you. So what are we? What is there to talk about? That is the end of the story. That is the end of the story. Now I want to hear your own opinion. What is your take on this? What is your opinion on this? Everybody have to talk now. I want to bring you guys on camera. Somebody have to contribute. What is your take on this? Let me go back to my Bible back to the book of John. Somebody say something. Say something. Questions. Now it is time. The floor is open. The floor is open now. Question. Ask your question. Ask us question. Ask your question. This is where we, we are going to end today. We read, we read, we did, um, we did, um, uh, verses chapter 2 verses 1 to 11 so tomorrow we'll start from verse 12 but today now we are treating this one Jesus turning water into wine so tell me now alcohol what is your say concerning alcohol who wants to talk you can type if you don't want to come on video type what you type it and I will just read it out type it and I will just read it out what is your take on alcohol how do you see it how do you view it do you still drink alcohol? If you do, you need to stop. I used to. I used to. As a child of God, even then I was a deaconess. I was first an, a deaconess before I, became an, before, before I became an evangelist. I was ordained as a deaconess. Even that time, deaconess, assistant woman leader in the church, I still would drink uh, in the church. Oh, because I believe in the drink, but don't get drunk. Until God convicted me and gave me this insight, I stopped immediately. I stopped immediately. I used to believe in drink but don't get drunk. And then I will have Irish cream in my house. But also, do you know it's a bad example to our children? What are we teaching our children? That it's okay to drink? Do you know where you are keeping that your alcohol? If your children will sneak in in the night when you are not home, they'll go and drink a little bit. Drink a little bit. You are teaching them already how to drink. You are teaching them. And then God forbid the demon that is behind alcohol now possesses them then this student becomes that is they can't wait to drink they can't wait to drink it's just the same way like smoking like children that their parents smoke they are liable to start smoking from the age of eight because they were born and brought up in smoke so they want to test it they want to test it so how will you feel when you just go out come and you just catch your 10 year old son or daughter or 15 years 12 years you catch them drinking your alcohol that you kept in your room you start beating them. Why will you beat them? Use the example they learned from you. Is the example they learned from you. It is the example they learned from you. It's demonic. Alcohol is demonic. Because before you know it, it says, Tony says, it's demonic. I used to drink it. Twist, twist your mind. You hear and say things that's not true. It makes you lazy. You can't focus on the word. Yes. It will stand as a hindrance to your spiritual growth. That is true. You are right, sis. I want more, 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 more contributions about alcohol because we are going now. We are living now. We are living now. I want more contribution. What do you say? What is your opinion? Come on, share your opinion about alcohol. I want to hear your opinion regarding alcohol. We are it's Bible study. Come on, let's 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 discuss. Let's discuss. Tell me what is your opinion? What is your own opinion about alcohol? Do you want to come online, Sister Tani? Do you want me to bring you online? It says, uh, Sister Tani, do you have anything from your experience? Come on, in the past. Like in the past, do you want to share your experience with us when you were in the, in the past? When you used to take alcohol, what was your experience? Do you want to share with us? I can bring you online. Should I bring you on? Type yes or no if you want me to bring you. Should I add you? Type yes or no. Come on, Sister Beth. For me. For me, as believers, I don't think it's something we have to debate, debate about. Because taking alcohol will definitely take us away from the things of God. Definitely, that is a fact. That is a fact. How many of us here watching, you are, you are a Christian, but you will still take alcohol. And you just find out that 
You can't even stop. You can't even stop. I... <laughs> <laughs> my sister is running you are running away so it's not something to debate about but there are some of us you are still struggling with this you are still struggling with this if you are here and you are struggling with alcohol and you want deliverance say it now so that i will pray for you right here and now and that demon of alcohol will leave you in the name of jesus david uh, the schools here Pray, please pray for me about what? Like, I don't just pray randomly because I don't know. I don't know. Would like a word, please. You would like a word, please. We are, we've been receiving words. Word has been coming in. You don't need any special word. The word you need is the word of God. That is all the word you need. Don't be deceived. It's God first. Before anything else. So, is anybody here that is taking alcohol? And you want us to pray for you? You know that you are getting addicted to this alcohol. You want us to pray for you. So that that demon of alcohol will leave you. Alcohol, is it alcohol, alcoholism, alcohol, whatever, whatever. It is not from God and it is not of God. Hallelujah. We are about to round up now. We are rounding up actually. We are going to pray in a minute. Does anyone have anything to say? Before we start to pray, we're just going to pray. You can type your response. You can type it. I'm not going to bring you on video, but just type, type your, type, type your own say, what you think. Type it. Just type it. Your opinion. Your opinion counts. Type it so that we can just read it out. And, uh, and if there's anything we need to clarify, do you need clarification in any area? You need a clarity regarding any area? You know, just, just say. Hallelujah. My shanda that I was killed the hideous. Alcohol has nothing good to offer. Oh. Alcohol has nothing good to offer anybody at all. So if you are drinking alcohol, you need to leave it. You need to stay away. Before the alcohol will pull you out of God's presence. You are the carrier of the Holy Ghost. Except if you are not born again. If you are born again, you need to leave it. You need to let it go. You need to let it go. Actually, I received more grace, more fire when I've done away with all these things. We kill every spirit of alcoholism in the name of Jesus. I pray that the blood of alcohol, the taste of alcohol will die in your mouth. It will die in you. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. We worship you. We worship you. We need to be honest with ourselves. You need to be honest with yourself. Since you see, God has given said the, the, the power of grace, grace and truth is in us. It's been given to us. Sometimes we can come here and play to be all holy, all righteous, all this, all that. But deep down we know that things are not right with us. Spiritually, we know that we are faulting, we are at fault. We are, taking the, we are taking the Holy Ghost for granted. We are taking our salvation for granted. We are doing things that we ought not to do in secret. My pastor did not know back then. Back then when I, was, when I used to take, oh, drink and don't get drunk that time. My pastor doesn't know. I still come to church and minister. I still come to church and sing in the choir. I come to church and do all of that. But I still did not feel like it was a sin. But then, what is God saying about it? Mm -hmm. Let me see. Some of you are typing. Let me see. Say, say, thank you, sis. We kill every spirit of alcohol in the name of Jesus. Yes, so the Bible said that we should be filled with the Holy Spirit of God. Yes, the Bible says we should be filled with the Holy Spirit of God, not with alcohol. Not with alcohol. Because apart from you, do you know it's a bad example to our own children? Our own children, because they are watching you. And our children, they learn more by watching us. You cannot tell your children, do, do as I say, not as I do. You can't say that to them. So you are a very bad example to them. They see you come with bottles of alcohol. So tell me, when your child is under age, what will stop that child from taking the alcohol? 
What will stop the child from taking the alcohol? Thank you for the great doctrine. You are amazing and obedience. We learn a lot from you. I love you. I love you too, sis. Thank you. God bless you. It doesn't even taste good to me anymore. At all. Ooh, even the smell is horrible. Horrible. Hmm. It smells. That's the thing. When you give it up and the Holy Ghost washes you, when you even perceive the smell, it, you, you, can't, you, it just, you get sick. Even by just perceiving the smell. Not to talk of tasting it. You know? So the fact that Jesus turned uh, water into wine. And look at the, his reason. Look at his reason. He says, he says at the end that this is the beginning of the miracle uh, Jesus did in Cana of Galilee. And manifested forth. And he, he did it to manifest forth his glory. And his disciples believed on him more. Let me read it from my easy to read version. You see, one of the reasons he did it is to manifest his glory. To also strengthen his disciples as well. That he's got the power to do these things. He did, he did not drink it. Neither did his disciples. The Bible did not. There is no way it is recorded that Jesus drank that same alcohol. There is no verse. I've not seen it in any of the verses that he drank it. That he drank it. In the wedding. In chapter 2. Okay, so in verse 11, say, this was the first, I'm reading John chapter 2, verse 11. This was the first of all the miraculous signs Jesus did. He did it in the town, town of Cana in Galilee. By this, he showed his divine greatness. Did you hear that? By this, he showed his divine greatness. And his followers believed in him. It strengthened his followers. Not that Jesus... It further convinced them that yes, they were in the right place and with the right person. It, he did it for his glory, for the glory of God, so that they will know that the response. See, that wine even tasted sweeter than all the ones that they had during the wedding. They thought they had the best wine. But when the wine of Jesus came, it was sweeter. When the Holy Ghost, you will think you have arrived. You may think you have accomplished. You may think, oh yes, this is enough. But test the power of God. When it comes upon you, it is sweeter than anything. You can't explain it. I can't even explain it. It's so awesome. It's so great. I am encouraging everyone of us today. If you know you are still in the business of alcoholism, cigarettes, and other things that is ungodly, the Bible says whatever things are good, pure, of good report. These are the things we should do. Alcohol has no good report. Alcohol has ruined many lives. Don't let it ruin your life. God bless you. More grace to you. God bless you, Sister Beth. It is well with you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We are going to pray now. We are going to pray. Just open your mouth. You, you, heard, the, you heard the message today. From the book of chapter 1. We've seen... How Jesus was the word. He was. He existed even before he came. Our understanding. If you are just coming or you came late, please go back and watch this video. Go and watch it from the beginning. Just open your mouth. Just pray. Pray according to how the Spirit will lead you. If you were, if you were, look at the, the story of Nathaniel. The Bible says that he can be trusted. And I ask, who can you be trusted? Can God trust you with that position? Can God trust you without calling? Many pastors, many ministers, they started very well. But today, they are all on the wrong side. Many children of God started the race very well. But today, they are on the wrong side. What about you and I? Me that is speaking, you. We have started this race. How are we going to end up? Can God trust me? Can God trust you to handle things? Can God trust you in his church? Can he trust you in your community, in your street? He said to Nathaniel, this truly is a child of God and he can be trusted. He, that means he was proud of the kind of person that Nathaniel was. What about you and I? Can God be proud of us to say, oh, I trust my daughter. Oh, I trust that my son. I know that no matter what, he will not fall. Like he said, he trusted Job. Like, you know, in the book of Job. He was so proud and he was telling the devil, have you seen my son Job? There is none other like him. He had that same trust for Job. What about you and I? Open your mouth and begin to pray. You know the areas you are guilty. I know the areas that I am guilty. 
We know the areas that we are guilty. Just begin to say, Lord, have mercy on me. I know I have failed you in this area. I know God has blessed you. He has blessed you with one thing or the other. And that thing he has blessed you with is what is keeping you away from him. Is what is taking you away from his presence. Is what is taking you away from the church. You are using his blessings as an excuse not to come before him. Not to come to church. How about that one too? What about you? Are you spending time with God? We were told in chapter 1 that John the Baptist, God revealed Christ to him, which means he had a good relationship with God. For God to be revealing things to him, he must have, he must have had a very good relationship with God. Whatever you and I, do we have good relationships with God? Do we spend time in his word? Do we spend time in prayer? Do we spend time speaking to people about him? Do we spend time interceding for one another? Do you know him? Just open your mouth and begin to pray. Father, we just come before you. We ask for your mercy. We ask for your grace, oh God. Oh, we thank you because we realize, we know we've been told again. We've been reminded that in the beginning you are. In the beginning you were. Oh Lord, we just give you praise because you are the beginning, you are the end. You are the lilies of the valley, the I am that I am unchangeable God. We bless you, faithful God in heaven. Oh, we thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you, Jesus. You are the word. Lord, you said that even this truth and grace is in us, Father. We bless you because we tend to forget whom we are in you. Lord, we tend to forget the authority and the power that we carry as your children. Have mercy on us. In any area that we have faulted, in any area that we are guilty, Lord, we ask for your grace. Many of us, we are born again children of God. We are still addicted to alcohol. But Lord, you said that our body is the temple of the living God. Father, and we defile this temple with alcohol, with cigarettes, add some addictions. Father, have mercy upon us in the name of Jesus. Have mercy upon us, O God. Wash us with your blood. Cleanse us, O God. Purge us, Father. Oh, give us grace, O God. Multiple grace to follow you sincerely. With all honesty, O God. In the name of Jesus. The Lord will come to that place where you will say, Yes, I trust that my daughter. Yes, I trust that my son, like you said to Nathaniel. Lord, you will bring us to that point. When our life is no more about us, but you. That we will learn to pour ourselves out to you. That we will learn to pour ourselves away to you, Father. <laughs> Lord, you desire our hearts, oh God. We don't want to be among those that will draw near to you with their mouths, with their lips, and their hearts are far away. Lord, we ask that you will draw us nearer to you. That you will help us to draw closer to you. We receive your grace and strength to study the Bible. We receive the grace not to be lazy Christians in this generation, Lord. Lord, I refuse to be a lukewarm Christian, Lord. We refuse to be lukewarm, my Father. Hey, my Shanda, that I was You said he that puts his hands on the plow and looks back is not fit for your kingdom. Daddy, I don't want to look back. Anything that will cause me to look back, Father, may it be far from me. May it be far from us as your people. May it be far from us as your people, Lord. Lord, we ask that your Holy Ghost that lives and abides in us will continue to control our lives. Let our lives be controlled by the Holy Spirit. Let our hearts be guarded by the Holy Spirit. Help us not to lean in our own understanding. Like you said in Proverbs 3, from 3 to 5. You said that we should trust you with all of our hearts and lean not unto our own understanding, but that we should acknowledge you in all of our ways, oh God. Our understanding will fail us. Our understanding will mislead us. Help us to trust you completely. Help us to depend on you completely. Help us to rely on you completely, not in our own strength or ability. Lord, I pray for myself. And I pray for my viewers, oh God, as they are watching and listening. Lord, that you will touch us in a new way today.
That by the virtue of this study today, that there will be a supernatural turn around. There will be a supernatural twist of God in our lives. That we will turn away from everything that does not glorify your name. That we will turn away from sin. That we will turn away everything that takes us out of your presence, oh God. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. It is not your will that any should perish. But that we should all come to repentance. Oh, Father, we just give ourselves to you. At those junctions, I want to call on you. Anyone watching right now? Is there anyone that wants to give their life to Jesus? Have you been convicted by those words that we spoke? This study that we just had. And your spirit is telling you, oh, you are guilty in this area. You are guilty in that area. Oh, there is somebody here. You have not even accepted Jesus into your life. Let me tell you the truth. You cannot make it in life without Christ. Every life that is not in Christ is in crisis. <laughs> I pray that your life will never be in crisis in the name of Jesus. I want to call upon you now that wants to give your life to Jesus. You are tired of living your life the way you want. You are tired of living your life in a certain way. And today God is calling on you. Come unto me. All you that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. He said, take my yoke upon you for my burden is light. The yoke of Jesus is light. His burden is light. Oh, he paid the price for you and I on the cross of Calvary. <laughs> he left his throne just because of how much he loves you. Ah, he loves you too much. Hey, Jesus, Jesus, my father, my father, my maker, lover of my soul, I worship you. You are here today. You want to say, Lord, come into my life as my Lord and Savior. I want you to say this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, wherever you are, distance is no barrier to prayer. He sees you. He's right there with you. Say, Lord Jesus, I come before you. I know that I'm a sinner in need of help. Have mercy upon me. Have mercy upon me, Lord. Forgive me my trespasses against you. Wash me with that blood you shed for me on the cross of Calvary. I accept you today into my life as my Lord and personal Savior. Holy Ghost, come upon my life. I know that I am born again. Thank you because your blood has set me free. Thank you, Lord, because today I am a citizen of heaven. Thank you, Jesus, because today you have given me peace. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul from damnation. I am saved. I am born again. Oh, thank you, Jesus, because I am born again. Oh, thank you, Father, for loving me enough to turn my life around. Thank you, Jehovah, for your death on Calvary. In Jesus' name I pray. If you are such a person, please inbox me at the end. And we will take it up from there. Look for a Bible-believing church around you and get connected. Identify yourself to your pastor, the pastor of that church. Let them know you just gave your life to Christ. So that they can guide you. So that they can lead you. They can support you. Inbox me too. Father, we worship you. We worship you. <laughs> Oh, we worship you, we worship you. You are here, you are thinking, how am I supposed to live without this, without that? All you need is the Holy Ghost. All you need is the Holy Spirit in your life. He will guide you, he will lead you. It is not of your power. It is not by your power or by your strength. It's by the Spirit of the Lord. <laughs> by strength, our strength will fail us. By strength shall no more prevail. But we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. Rest in his love. Rest in his, in his assurance that you are never alone. You are never alone. Lord, we thank you for your word tonight. Oh, let this word begin to yield increase in our lives. Let this word begin to reshape and rebuild our lives. Let this God, these words, oh God, begin to draw us nearer and closer to you. The grace to do away with everything that is not of yours, we receive it in a hundredfold, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we cover ourselves in your blood. Yes, every of one viewing from all over the world, from Canada, from America, from Europe, from Nigeria, Asia, from Jerusalem, wherever they are viewing from today. I see a whole lot of you online, even though it's saying five. We are actually almost 30 online. If I'm to count, we are even more than that. Hallelujah. 
Yes. Wherever we are viewing from Jesus. Lord, that you begin to touch us individually. Begin to meet with us, oh God. Begin to touch us in the areas that we need your touch. And bring us back tomorrow to continue, Father. Holy Spirit, we thank you for how far you led us. We thank you, Jesus, for being in control. A lot has come out today. Lord, we ask, oh God, that your Holy Spirit will take us through this John, the book of John series. In the name of Jesus. Blessed be your name, oh God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Lord, we cover ourselves in your blood. Cover everyone here in the blood of Jesus. Blessed be your name, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you or God bless you in the name of Jesus. Brother Uche, are you still online? I don't know if you're online or you left already. If you're online, can you type you're online? Amen and amen. And please, if you are just coming, go back and watch this video. Just watch it, and I know the Lord is going to bless you. And also pray, pray, pray. And also read your Bible. We read, uh, we did John chapter one today, to uh, chapter two, verses one to eleven of chapter two. So tomorrow we are coming online by three p.m. in the afternoon, three p.m. And we are going to start from John chapter two, from verse twelve, and we will stop where God will lead us to stop. And please do share, share this, to share. You'll be blessed as so when you share. In the name of Jesus. God bless you guys. I love you guys. I love you all. Thank you all for joining. Thank you for watching. It is well with you in the name of Jesus. I know by his grace that at the end of this John series, we shall be transformed. Our, our, our lives will be transformed. We will grow stronger. We will know him better. And we will serve him better. In the name of Jesus, our lives will be drawn closer to him. That is his desire. He wants us to fellowship with him every day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So until I see you guys tomorrow, by his grace, 3 p.m. British time. 3 p.m. I'm going to post it tomorrow morning. The time we are meeting tomorrow, I will post it. It's going to be 3 p.m. British time. God bless you. Also be informed that... Our three days of supernatural encounter and deliverance is coming up in April. I'm trying to put the date, the date in April. I know many of you can't wait. What is that? It's saying, I speak with somebody about our brother, which she promised to help me. Oh, that is great. That is great. That is great. God bless you. Please spread the word. Spread the word. I don't know, Uche, are you online? I wanted to bring you on so that you can you can talk. You can talk to the people and share your testimony. You know. Uche, um, probably tomorrow because uh, tomorrow we're going to be online earlier. So we'll talk about him tomorrow. By the grace of God, and I will tell him to be online and see if I can bring him online so that he can talk. Uche, uh, Uche is the name of uh, one of our brothers. He had an accident when he was 21 years old. He's been in the hospital for 25 years now. But to the glory of God, he was discharged today. Yeah. He's been discharged from the hospital now. He was discharged over the weekend and his bills is out now today. And I think I, I was talking to him earlier on. He said his bill, his hospital bill for five years. In his, he's been in the specialist hospital in Benin City. Specialist hospital. And that uh, they had mercy on him. And they gave him... Um, um, account number. Okay, let me pull. Let me let me share it and pin it. So and that um, and that the the hospital they kind of had mercy on him. By the grace of God, he was given like discount. Some social welfare came. Some social welfares came. I can't. Let me post the information uh, with the um, all the all the details. Okay, the account. The Nigeria account number is there too. So you can you can you can. I'm just going to post it. So by the grace of God, they had mercy on him. And uh, the the hospital bill for the five years, this is the first time he's been, he had an accident um, in uh, when he was 21 years, 21 years old, which is uh, five, five years ago. And since then, he, he had, he had a spinal cord, uh, uh, he sustained a spinal cord injury from that accident. From that accident, he was operated on twice. He was operated on twice, but to no avail. So right now, right now, he's not, 
from his waist down, he's not moving. I, 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 I hate to use the word paralyzed because I believe in, in God restoring him back. God is going to restore him back by his grace. I believe in the God that we serve, that he's able to do all things. Even Brauche believes that God is going to restore him. And so I believe God too, that he will restore him by the grace of God. God is going to restore him. God is going to restore him. God is going to restore him. Whew. It's not easy to be living in the hospital for five years. Five years of his life wasted on the spot. And because his parents couldn't afford, couldn't afford his medications, couldn't afford all of these things, you know, he's been there. And because he was on one, he was on the spot, so because he couldn't move, because he couldn't move, he's been on the spot, he developed very bad bed sores. Very terrible, horrible looking bed sores. Very horrible. Uche, are you online? If you're online, I wanted to bring you so that you, so they can see you. So that they can, you can, you can just tell us, you know, how it's been so that you can talk to them. Talk to the people so they know. Hallelujah. If you're online, you can just send a message. Let me try to bring you online. So he, de he developed... He developed very bad bed sores. I'm trying to post the payment page thingy. Okay, all the payment information. He's go for you can read about him too. He's uh, the link. If you follow the link, let me try to pin it. If you follow the link. I've pinned it. I've pinned the information. If you follow the link from the beginning, you will see his GoFundMe page. His story is there. You will see him talking, actually talking. He's still, he was, he's still in the hospital. And to the glory of God, for the first time in five years, this young man has been discharged. He's now 26 years old. Five years of his life wasted on a spot in the hospital bed. And now he's been discharged. So they gave him his bill today by the grace of God. For five years, his bill is... Uh, 400 and uh, ah, he told me 400 that is let's say his bill hospital bill is about 1000 pounds yeah let's say 1000 pounds because the initial plan was to take him i would have loved actually to still seek second opinion about him the waist down for them to you know that hospital he was is a very poor hospital same specialist hospital they have no equipment they have nothing so for personally we wanted to like take him elsewhere we wanted to take him elsewhere, South Africa, India, wherever we can take him. And that is why we did the GoFundMe for 20, 25,000 pounds so as to give him access to a uh, second opinion, more medical care because he's waist down. God has to restore him at this prime. He's at the prime of his life and the enemy wants to steal his future and his destiny. You know, so I did not make this up. Some people inboxed me actually from behind. I was saying, is this true? It is very true. 100% true. I have verified it. I sent one of my pastors in Nigeria to go see him in the hospital. Actually, we've been taking care of him since um, for almost two weeks. The Lord connected him to us. My friends sent him money. Even as at the time he got connected to me, he was using ordinary water to clean his big, big sores. See the big sores? Very big. The pictures are there. Go and look at it. The pictures from his buttocks down his legs the pictures are there he told me that there was no money to buy medical supplies because he had to buy them the hospital does not supply him his medical needs and he was just there trusting god when god connected him to me and immediately i sent money home immediately i sent one of my pastors to him and got him all the materials which he is still using up until now i bought him a lot i bought him big, big packs that will last him for a while that is what the kingdom of god is all about tiny you are a witness he I wish he's online now. He will tell you. He even said it in his video. In the video, is, the video is among this link that I sent. Press, check all the links. You will see it there. So he's been discharged and this boy is homeless. His, his parents live in the village where there is no, no nothing. No, he will not have access to medical care. And this source, he's still, the source are still bleeding. He can't even use. For five years, this man have not seen outside the hospital. He has not been taken outside that bed that he's been sleeping on. See how terrible, see how terrible, how terrible that is. And that just broke our heart that 
been in a, in a spot for five years, he's not seen the sky. And yet we complain. We have legs. We have hands. We go and come. We are still complaining. Look at, look at the life of this young man. And he's still filled with joy because he got born again right there in the hospital. And God has been faithful to him. You know? And by the grace of God, now he's been, he was, he's been, he's been receiving treatment for the past two, I think about two weeks now that I supplied him this supply, uh, medical supplies. And some of my friends, I told them they were sending him money and all of that. And so now we wanted to discharge him from that hospital and take him to a better hospital. But he said he doesn't want, he's tired of hospital. He said he doesn't want to go to the hospital, any hospital anymore. So he said all he needs now is for him to clear his medical bills because <laughs> In that country, if he doesn't pay, if he doesn't pay his hospital bill, he will be held ransom. He won't be, he will not be allowed to leave the hospital. That is how it it works in Benin City, in Nigeria. Even though it's supposed to be a government hospital, if he doesn't pay that bill, they won't let him go. They won't let him go. And number two, he doesn't have accommodation because the place he rented before he had the accident, the landlord, his landlord has confiscated all of his property. So he's going, he doesn't even, even know where to go to from the hospital because his parents are very poor in the village and he will not have access to medical care in the village. He will not have access to medical care in the village. And there is no even reception like he, before his mother can call him, they have to go on the hill. So we cannot even reach him if he goes to that village, you see. So we need to rent him a self-contained, self-contained, um, self-contained apartment which is like self-contained where he can stay and when he's there we need to we you know doctors private doctors and nurses health health, health workers have to be coming home to treat him and take care of him and they, they said they asked him to be coming to the hospital twice every week thursdays and fridays when he's gone home all this is going to cost money it's going to cost money to get a doctor to him in the house or even if we are leaving the doctor a nurse until he sores we just want all those bed sores. They are very deep and they are still bleeding. We want the healing of God upon those bed sores. When the bed sores heal, they will begin to talk about giving him a second opinion, getting a professional for them to really examine his waist down because that boy cannot be in a wheelchair. Even for five years, his parents could not afford him a wheelchair. His parents could not afford him a wheelchair. It was one of my one of the messages a sister contacted me and said she would like to. And that is how somebody donated a wheelchair to him. Now he has a wheelchair now to the glory of God. And I'm praying for that person that donated that wheelchair to him that God will bless you. Even though he got the wheelchair, he still cannot even sit in the wheelchair. He hasn't sat on that wheelchair yet because of his uh, uh, buttocks. Because of the saw that is in his buttocks. The bed saw is very big. You need to see it very big. And so him leaving the hospital now, he needs money for accommodation. I don't know how much the accommodation will cost. Probably about 100. I don't know how much is a self-contained apartment in Benin City. I don't know how much it is. We need to find out. And then we need to pay uh, 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 health care like nurses that will be coming to take care of him in the house and treat those sores and all of that and nurse him back to nurse him, nurse him, you know. And then we need somebody, we need to hire somebody that will be living with him because I don't like using the word cripple. He cannot walk. He cannot move. So he will need help, like with people that will help him with cooking and moving him around. All these things is going to cost money. At the end of the day, we need hmm, his hospital business already one thousand pounds to rent a house and a doctor and all of that for a start. We need another thousand pounds. We need another. We need about two to three thousand for a start now for him to just get out of the hospital first. Then rent him a house and we have to furnish the house with bed chair just basic basic things cooking materials we have to furnish like now right now we urgently need about three thousand pounds for both the hospital bills renting in a house for him and and um uh, renting a house hiring health professionals and then we need to buy health the materials he his treatments all the materials uh food talking about feeding talking about paying those people that will be assisting him urgently we urgently need three thousand urgently for that for now please if god lays anything in your heart to use to bless this young man god himself is going to bless you god will bless you be your brother sometimes giving is sacrifice it's not about you having it's not that you have it but you can sacrifice your 10 pounds you can sacrifice your 20 pounds it does not have to be a thousand you can sacrifice if all of us now online which we are here online we are more than 30 online some people have gone, some are going, and some are still coming. We are people, a whole lot of us, you contribute 10, 10, 20, 20. That is going to go a long way. 
in helping him. There are a whole lot of us online, still online, though we are not commenting, but you are listening, you are watching. God bless you all. Please, whatever the Lord lays in your heart, 10 pounds, 20 pounds, 30 pounds, 50 pounds, 100 pounds, 500, whatever you have, you know the Lord is laying in your heart to help this man. He's a brother. He's born again. He's a Christian. He's not related to me. He's not my blood relative. I've not known him physically, personally. I've not even met him, but I have sent my sister to that hospital with uh, one of my pastors in Benin City, Nigeria. They have gone to see him and they have confirmed that the word he said is true. So he's not lying. That is just the fact. Because one of my pastors was the one that took the list from him. I went to go when I sent money to go buy him everything that he needed. That he needed. So this is a true story. It's not just me making it up. I pray he, he was online before. He's gone. When he comes back, hopefully tomorrow, I will bring him so that you will hear from him. You will hear from him. He's really pleading. He's begging that, please, there is no hope. His parents are poor and they cannot pay that hospital bill. And this man is tired. He wants to leave the hospital for five years. He's been on that bed for one five, five years. He's been on that single bed and he wants to leave the hospital. As you help him, God is going to bless you. Doors will be open to you. You don't need to have millions to assist anybody. If you press on the pinned post, there is a page for a GoFundMe page we opened for him. You can use the GoFundMe page if you have your bank card. Just go on the GoFundMe page, put the amounts you want to give to him. If you want to pay by Western Union, some people pay with Western Union to the name. You pay Western Union to that name, Okiki. Okiki, uh, what's the name? There is the name there. To pay with Western Union. If you are paying by Western Union, compared to Mr. Okieke Aigbe. That guy is in Nigeria, he's in Benin City, so he's the one that people have been paying to from America and any uh, and other parts. So he will receive it, and I always will inbox him and message him. He gets he's the, he's aware of how much he's got. He's aware of everything. So and if you want to pay, there is my uh, PayPal is there too. There is a link for PayPal. Yeah, there is a link for PayPal. PayPal me with the amount. Also, you are asking for my own person. My bank detail is there. I am the one doing the fundraising. That's why I'm collecting the money. But I always screenshot anything that is paid into my account and I send it to him. I send it to him. He needs help. God will not go. God, God will not go forbid. I will not eat any money, any anything that does not belong to me. I will never take it in the name of Jesus. God has taken me beyond that level in the name of Jesus. Actually, my charity is, uh, is in the process of registration now. My charity organization will soon be ready in the next few couple of months. It will be ready. That is what the Lord has called me to do, to bless people, to be there for people. Charity is one of the things. It's, getting, it's, re it's in the process and I'm registering it. My charity, my own charity, yes, it will be ready. And these are the things I want to do for people. These are the things I want to assist people. There are people there that need you and I. It's not enough that we come out here, shout, 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 preach, preach, preach. But love is practical. Love practical. How can we say we love God when we don't love our neighbor? There is a lie. And Jesus said that. They would say, depart from me. I know you not. Why? When I was hungry, you did not give me food. When I was naked, you did not clothe me. When I was homeless, you did not put a roof over my head. So because of that, many of us will lose God's kingdom. May that not be my portion. I may not be your own portion in the name of Jesus. Whatever God has blessed you with is not yours. It's for God. You use it for God. I'm not saying give to me, but help me to save a life. Help me, truth by the grace of God, to bring, put a smile on somebody's face. And God will bless you. God will bless you. Help me to reach people that I need. That is my passion. That is my passion. That is why I do this uh, conference with women empowerment. Another one is coming up soon to empower the women. I, we found, I found it. And with the help of some friends, we funded the last one. So this is what I'm called to do. It is a passion that I have. Hallelujah. And I pray that God will give us grace to be there for others. Life is not about you and I alone. Life is not about us. Those in the grave with all their money, they are gone. They are dead and gone and is living. they've left it. But God says we should lay treasures for ourselves in heaven. This is how we lay treasures for ourselves in heaven. And as you do this, God will bless you. So there are many payment options there. There is the GoFundMe, his GoFundMe page we opened in his name. You can go there and on the link, you can put, you use your card to donate. If you go to PayPal, my PayPal address is there. You can put there. My own bank account in Nigeria. Nigeria bank account is there for that person asking for bank account. It's there, but put reference. Reference, you should put medical bills as reference, so I know it's his. 
Put medical bills as reference. If you do not have access to all this and you want to pay with Western Union or MoneyGram, pay to that name, Western Union MoneyGram to Nigeria. The name to use is there with his phone number. All you have to do is inbox me the receipt you use in paying on Facebook. Inbox me the receipt with the information and I will pass it on to him. He will collect the money and add it to the rest of the money that other people have sent for him. Please, we still need money. We still need help. He need about £3,000. And we haven't even collected up to up to three hundred pounds. We have like uh, naira, eighty something thousand naira, and fifty 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 pounds already on the on the GoFundMe. So please help us, help us, help us to help this brother. And heaven will reward you in the name of Jesus. Whatever you sow into the life of people is never a waste. Is month end is coming now. Most of you will be collecting your wages, your salaries, whatever it is you collect at the end of the month. Just take so into the life of this guy. So into his, uh, his life. And God is going to bless you in Jesus' name. Um, this is where we'll go. I'm going to leave you now. But please, some of you are just joining. Make sure we have studied the book of uh, John chapter 1. We are in the John series. We are going to continue tomorrow from where we stop today. We studied John chapter 1 and chapter 2 verses 1 to 11. So make sure you go back. Play this video when we finish. And try to listen to it. There are, it's fully loaded. Fully loaded. And your lives will never remain the same in the name of Jesus. May God bless you. May he cause his face to continually shine upon you. You will never miss it in the name of Jesus. Heaven will be our final destination in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you guys. I love you, God. I love you all. I love you all. Have a wonderful night rest. Bye-bye.